beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the Word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed let me tell you something. The Bible says five, there was a time all the ten had the opportunity to get extra oil. Is that true? There was a time that they could have gotten as much oil. This is the time right now. But while five were paying, they all had oil. They all had oil. Is that true? They were anointed. They had knowledge. But the remaining five said, uh -uh, the fierceness of time will require that we hold extra oil. And while the five held extra oil, the remaining people, the Bible says, although they were virgins, they were foolish. What was their foolishness? Refusal to pay attention. When the, those who sold this oil said, remember the Bible says, it is wisdom that stands on the street and cries. While men are passing, wisdom is saying, look, pay attention to me. We need a Sunday school department. Who did CEM? Please. Help that baby. Praise God. Are you listening to me? And then, all of them were gathered. What they did not know, listen, was that the oil was being used and would require refilling. And a time came when the lamp of the other five was dying. And the Bible says there was a sudden announcement. This is exactly how life will present itself. Sudden announcement. Here comes the bridegroom. Everybody, the Bible says the five who were wise. On the strength of their extra work. They now said now we have enough. For this occasion with the bridegroom. And then the remaining five. The remaining five. Who did not pay attention. The Bible says they were, they came to beg the other five and say, please, can you give me small oil? They say, no, when it comes to this one, we don't, there are some things they cannot help you do. Listen, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters, there are certain parts in life that nobody can help you cross. No matter how they love you, nobody can get born again for you. Is that true? And the remaining five had to run out. I told you this thing. I'm giving you the scriptural basis. That when you don't pay attention to some things. No matter how far you go in life. The, the, the time they were supposed to run and go and buy. They didn't pay attention. Now they were forced to go out. And the Bible says while they went. What happened? The door was closed. The door was closed. There are some things you are receiving right now. That you will bless God for tomorrow. I just sat this afternoon and I was just praying. I was just praying for everyone and blessing God for the ability to hear and to receive the word of the Lord. Was that rain? 
if that's rain, bring the chairs inside. Bring the chairs. Just find anywhere and sit down. Come. Ushers, help them. Add chairs in the front. Add chairs everywhere. Come and sit down in the pulpit. It's the word that you are hearing now that will give you shelter tomorrow. Huh. You have been a shelter in the rain. You have been a doctor when in pain. Lord, you've been a listener when I call. Oh, Lord, you've been my friend. You have been shelter in the rain you have been a doctor when in pain you have been a listener when I call oh Lord you've been my friend listen no matter what you are going through today, it's nothing compared to the whiplash that ignorance and lack of preparation will bring. I don't care what it is, so long as you are breathing. The Bible says a time will come, people will look for death and it will run away. What kind of suffering will make a man look for death? Sit down, anywhere. Sit on the floor. It's better to sit on the floor. Don't be ashamed of the camera. We are not, we are not playing, we are not acting film here. This is, this is life. Find a place. Sit everywhere. Come and sit around. Occupy some of these seats if you can. Just leave the minister's seats. Sit any other place. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I treasure the truths that I'm hearing. And I take God seriously. Say it one more time in the name of Jesus. I treasure the truths that I'm hearing. They are life to me. Because I found them. Hallelujah. I receive calls almost daily, text messages, hundreds of text messages every day. And the major issue is that many people call and they are asking for help. Families. Believers who are born again, pastors, great men and women of God who are trying to find meaning as to why their lives are the way they are. Are you listening to me? Every time we counsel people, we counsel every Mondays and there are families that come with unanswered questions. Listen. The level of unanswered questions that are falling upon people are becoming too serious. People, look, people are asking questions. Questions about their personal success. Questions about longevity. Questions about health. Science has failed. The government has failed. I was reading the paper about, I mean, um, online now, about um, Egypt and the commotion that is happening. And this country and all the things that are happening. And tears just filled my eyes. I said, Lord, I don't know what you did to me that made me to pay attention to your word. But I pray that the people in Koinonia will pay as much attention 
will pay as much attention. The Bible says, my son, pay attention to my words. You see, let me tell you something. The days of begging people for the things of God are over. Are you listening to me? Where you tell people, oh, come, we'll give you sweets, two, two tom-tom, one vix, one tom-tom for coming. And the people say, really? Will they give it? Or there's cold and then we'll prepare tea for you. And people come, they say, that tea I will take. Those days are over. Because whether or not, see, everybody in hellfire today believes in Jesus. I hope you know. The only mistake is that they believe too late. The Bible teaches us that there is a time. Please project Lamentations 3.28. Lamentations 3.28. I forbid you. I forbid you from failing in life. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I forbid you from entering prostitution. As a result of not listening to this message, I forbid our brothers from becoming arm robbers. Arm robbers are not just the ones who jump fence. I forbid you from going to a harbor list because you think the word of God is not working. Do you know the number of people that patronize harbor list, Bishop? It's not a hidden thing again. Pastors, prophets, apostles, everybody. Look at graduates running helter skelter around Nigeria. Did you know that many people who run back to Zaria don't just run back because of desire, they run back because of the pain and the severity of the frustrations. But there is a way. God cannot leave people in the dark. There is a way. Listen, it's the glory of God to conceal a matter and the honor of kings to search it out. You must search it out. You must search it out. Hallelujah. You must search it out. It is good for a man. Man doesn't mean a male figure. It just means a human being. It is good for a man that he bear his yoke. When? When? What is it about the youth of a man? The Bible says the glory of men is their strength. Is that true? Bear the burden. Pay the price. That's why I say this every time. You will quote me in the future. No matter how you cry, I don't care how you are looking at me, I will say it. Hate me, I will say it. I will preach it. We will file you. When you become a wonder tomorrow, you will look for us and say thank you. See, when you are in the training ground, there are some things you don't think about. You don't say, ah, my makeup, this powder is 10,000. Uh -uh. Or you say, Kai, this my suit is... Uh -uh. When you are in the training ground, you are there for business. It is when you win that you will celebrate. Is that true? Now is the time for training. So when we say pray in tongues, don't just say, ah, this fine guy is he looking... Pray! Open your mouth and pray. If you don't pray, life will whip you and you will still open that mouth. It will be open. The only thing is for what? Either to announce your pain and tragedy to the world that cannot help. Or to cry before God who is our help. I say I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. See, if you really get this thing, you have gotten it forever. Are you hearing me? I want one lady who can cook. You know, don't you know it's not pride. God has blessed you. You know you, whether you're a caterer or something, stand up, just one. Who is that? No, no, I'm not going to say you cook. It's an illustration. So, let's call the ones we are sure of. Opie, stand up. <laughs> oh, yeah, now, stand up. Look at this. Listen. If we ask you to make cake now, can you make it with absolute confidence? Ask me the same question. Ask me. No. I may try. It may work. I don't know. That's how many people's lives are. You tell them, how can you lead a man from point A to P? They say, well, I know. See, there is a level of persuasion I want you to get. Not just belief, persuasion. 
see how she just smiled about the cake thing but if they ask you to there are some of us you've made it once twice hallelujah it wasn't bad but you are not sure is that true when i saw this guy snapping and oga john i knew they knew what they were doing ask me to snap all i know is to look at you and press that thing doesn't matter how it comes out but these guys know something about perspective and angles and the rest this is what i'm teaching you don't just enter the world blindly and hoping that things will change there is a fierce world out there are you listening to me you're not going to live in health by mistake please get this are you listening to me living in health is not a mistake you're not going to be prosperous by mistake one day you wake up and say wow so i made it mm -mm, it will never be by mistake you're not going to know god by mistake you won't have a glorious life and a ministry by mistake you will not raise children after the fear of god by mistake this thing of mistake or nemesis or if god wants it he would do it stop that kind of language it's not a good language say if god really wants to bless me after all i didn't ask him for jesus to die so why would if he wouldn't he freely give me all things see if you don't pay attention you will be surprised is that true now hope let me ask you was there a time you could make cake but not very well what did you do did you train yourself you went for catering school mrs kait abby now listen you went, you, she followed those who, with faith and patience, leaving Samara and going to PZ every time because she was determined. Is that true? Now, she can bake cake for wedding. Somebody will give her 50,000 overnight. Is that true? And somebody will say, ah, hope that the same, uh, our birthday is the same. No, it's not the issue of birthday. This is why people get angry at the success of their colleagues. Because they think life respects age. Ask Elihu. They say, ah, when did the uh, promise become successful like this? When the same koinonia, the same, in the same class, taught by the same teacher, somebody will get 100, somebody will get zero. Is that true? God bless you, please If you pay attention if you pay attention and you give it seriousness i promise you it's a guarantee i promise you you know what i said this thing right from when we used to meet at the back of chapel that we will be so successful and the beautiful part is that we will all know ourselves so that it will not be guesswork you will know what you did you know, when you ask a pretty lady, you say, I, I see how fine you're looking. What is response? You say, it's God. Bro. Yes, it's God. But let me explain to you. It's God. God gave grace. You took advantage of that grace. Paul said, I am what I am by the grace of God. He said, but this grace was not showered upon me in that I labored more than he all. It's God that gives children. It's the woman that carries the gift. Correct? So that tomorrow, when you are blessed, it will not be a mistake. And the purpose of the blessing is to make others a blessing. That's why your blessing can never be by mistake. God will teach you the steps and you can guide somebody. Tomorrow, some of you, you are looking at me now. Some of you will be the ones on air. Presidents of nations will come to see the hand of God upon your life. And when they ask you, you'll be talking to other people. When you see somebody sagging his jeans and laughing, you say, look, for your own good, you better wash this childishness and sit down in one place. It's not the issue, oh, I can do both. It's the matter of the heart. Sit down and allow God to build you. Hallelujah. Proverbs 18, we've been considering the su subject of success. I tell you, my spirit is fired up. Proverbs 18, we began two weeks ago by talking about the spiritual dimension of success. Give me this mountain. Hallelujah. Played the documentary and we thought, I told you that success is spiritual. Everything, life in itself is spiritual. Don't let secular humanists deceive and confuse you. Life is spiritual. 
Hallelujah. Then we considered the place of wisdom. The dimension of wisdom that cannot be gotten by studies. The dimension of wisdom that cannot be gotten by accumulation of experiences. Job said, this wisdom is not found in the land, in the land of the living. Hallelujah. Today I want to talk, still building on success. What do you have in your house? Proverbs 18, I want to share a powerful secret and I trust God that will pray. Proverbs 18 verse 16. Proverbs 16. Let's read together. You can look up. One to read. And bring it him before great men. One more time. Now, where a man is, put your name. Ready to read? One, two. Don't say my gift. My is not your name. This is English. One, two, go again. Mean it from your heart now. One, two, go. Father, bless your word tonight. In the name of Jesus, give us understanding. Let the fruits of this teaching speak. Let it abide in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible says the gift of a man can do what? The word make there is create. It can create space for him in life. And usher him. Can we get it from NIV? Or New Living Translation? Anyone? Ah, is, that's, that's, not, is that, that's not the version. That's a different. 1816. A gift does what? It's, it's not saying a gift like a bribe. No. Just forget. It's not like a bribe. We're not talking of Nigeria here. Are you following me now? Because many of you, that's what you think I'm talking about. No. I'm not saying a gift like a seed. Huh? No. A gift. The gift of a man. It says what, my dear? It opens the way for who? Not the giver's friend. Not the giver's brother. It opens a way for what? And does what? And ushers him into the presence of it says the gift of a man. Whether there is space or not, the gift can push people and create space for him. And usher him into the place of the great. A man's gift can make room. Have you ever heard people say no space? Have you heard that language? Sorry, no space. If there was space, it would have helped you. The Bible says a man's gift has the ability to push people and make space. Not only that, when other people are segregating, it can usher him to the place of the great. Hallelujah. It can usher him to the place of the great. Write it quickly. What is a gift? God giving abilities. God giving abilities. Your potentials. God giving abilities. That's simply what a gift is. Your God giving ability. The Bible says if you take it seriously. It can create space for you in life. This night we are not just talking of gift. We are also talking of skill. What's your skill? Your learned abilities. Acquired abilities. The difference between a gift and a skill. Is that one is God given. It can only be developed. The other one can be learned. It can be acquired. Both of them have the capacity to bring you before great people. Say amen. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us of an interesting person called Joseph. Hallelujah. The Bible says that he had Joseph, by the way, please. Joseph was not a dreamer, for God's sake. Are you listening to me? Joseph was not a, there was nothing spectacular about the dreams of Joseph. 
as far as we know in the Bible, he had only two dreams. How many times have you had it? Have, have you dreamt? Are you a dreamer? So Joseph was not, his gift was not dreaming. His gift was the ability to interpret dreams. Are you following me now? So the Bible says that because of that ability, his brothers envied him. Many things happened. And then the Bible, I'm just rushing now. The Bible says when he was put, remember when, when um, Potiphar's wife and all her story, 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 let's just jump it. He found himself in the prison. Is that true? And the Bible says when he found himself in the prison, there was the wine presser and the baker. But he realized that he had something. Is that true? Are you following me now? When it was time for God to bless him, God made the king to dream and close the heavens over the sorcerers and the magicians. Are you listening to me? They got up in the morning and tried to do their enchantment as usual. No way. Because it was time for God to bring a man into success. But God realized that a gift can open a way. What way? The way of the prison. Nothing else would have opened that way for Joseph because they were not planning to bring him out. Is that true? There are many people today who do not realize that if they take advantage of the gift of God that is in them, it has the ability to take them from where they are into realms that they never dreamt possible. And tonight, this is our prayer. We've been examining the principles of success. There is a dimension of success that only your gift can bring to you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Your gift. This dependency attitude of Nigerians is what has stopped them from exploring their gift. Have you heard that statement? What is it in English? May God give you so that we will get. It's, it's a wrong concept of dependence. That's how many of us are waiting. Say, oh boy, just get work. Once you are there, just remember me. Your boy is there. Oh. See, let me tell you. If that is your mindset, you are going to suffer in this Nigeria. And in case you think you will run abroad, you will still suffer. There are still people, there are people under the bridge of every nation, true or false. Every nation in the world has, has bridge and there are people that sleep there. It's just that films don't carry it. There is ghetto everywhere, true or false. So, many of us have this escapism mind. You are just trying to get lottery and say, oh God, let this green American lottery just happen. They would go and see how many Nigerians live like, like outcasts abroad. Because they believe. I've told you, there is nowhere called greener pastures. Greener pastures is the word of God. The Bible says, he makes me lie down. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Many people want to run to Delta or rivers. Say, ah, oh yeah, we're coming to chop our share of the national cake. Go and find out how many poor people were born and bred in that same land. Are you listening to me? Everybody say, I have a gift. Say it, I have a gift. It can make room for me. It can take me from where I am to where God wants me to be. Hallelujah. Second Kings. Somebody is catching this thing and leaving some realms forever. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Catching this and leaving some realms forever. Hallelujah. Who would have known that comedians will be paid millions in Nigeria today? Look up please everybody. How many of you used to play football and you come back home and they've kept the cane to flog you? As soon as you are entering, there's a way you greet your father. He says, hey, hey, you already know that this night. But today, that same football, are you listening to me? That same football has blessed people. Comedians, for heaven's sake, they won't come until you give them 2.5 million or 5 million to come and talk. They just crack a joke. 
Hallelujah. There are artists today. Artists today. Those who draw caricature for banks. They are paid millions of naira. Millions of naira. Listen, if you get what I'm teaching you this night, something will happen in your life. Some of you, it will happen instantly. A young man called Gray Farah. Many of you know him. Gray Farah at age 10 was wondering what to do with his life. And he found out that he liked stones and he decided to start painting stones so that people will use it to just... You know, just press their books and their doorposts. And people started looking at him and laughing. Every time people saw it, they just laughed. And they said, well, let's just help this small boy. Little did they know that that was a champion in the making. A time came, he started packaging those stones very well. At age 12, Gray Farah became a millionaire. At age 14, he was seated in the board of directors of 14 companies. Age 14. How old are you? Are you listening to me? I want you to know that if you take advantage of the gift, the gift of God is his seed in you that is supposed to help you enter the realm where you have influence and honor to legislate on behalf of heaven. Are you listening to me? Jeremiah Gyang, I've told you, Jeremiah Gyang used to be in Joss. That guy they call Jeremiah Gyang. Now, um, whether they are serving Satan or God is not the issue now. Are you listening to me? The issue is that the gifts were developed. You, you, get, you get the point? The guy you call M.I. I've said it. Jesse Jacks. We were Sunday school mates. While all of us were looking at ladies, eh, pastor's daughter, this, those guys were building their potentials. Just like some of you were doing. You go to church. You won't sit down. You will use your offering money, buy ice cream, be playing ball at the back of the church. That's what you were doing. Whereas others were hearing the word and go. See the difference right now. Are you listening to me? That these things have been perverted does not negate the fact that if they are gifts, they will still bring men to honor. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Second Kings 4. The story of an interesting woman. Now, there cried a certain woman... Of the wives of the sons of the prophet. So the, the person was the son of a prophet. Look at me. I want to tell you something. Maybe I'm going to create another controversy now this night. Listen. That your man of God or your spiritual father or mentor is anointed. Does not automatically guarantee that you will enter success. Did you hear what I'm saying? The Bible says this guy was the son of who? That means it does not respect anointing. Thy servant, my husband, is dead. And thou knowest what thy servant, that thy servant feared the Lord. And the creditor is come to take my two sons to be slaves. And Elisha said to her, listen now. This woman was in a situation where she needed a miracle. Two of her children were going to go as slaves. Hallelujah. What did Elisha tell her? He said, what shall I do for you? And he asked a question. He said, tell me, what hast thou in thy house? What do you have where? In your house. And the Bible says there is this treasure in this house, these earthen vessels. He said, what do you have? The woman had been running helter-skelter, running helter-skelter, and she met the prophet. And the prophet said, what do you have in your house? Could it be that many of you who have been running helter-skelter or many families need to calm down and look at what you have in your house? I've learned by experience and by the word that the blessing of a man is always not far from him. It's just that there is no discernment to recognize it. Are you listening to me? Yes, the blessing of a man is always not far from him. Sometimes it's ridiculously close. You may not even know. There were many people who walked with Jesus, yet they were looking for miracles and until Jesus went to heaven, they were not blessed. Because they did not realize. Your miracle can be so close, you may not know. 
The Bible says, And she said, Thy handmaid had not anything in the house except what? A pot of oil. You see how she didn't place value on it? The Bible says she said, Thy handmaid had what? Nothing. Nothing. That means this thing is not of worth, but just for the sake of answering you, let it be there. Thy handmaid had nothing. There are many of you that God has given you certain things and you have been calling it nothing. 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 The gift of a man. Whether it's a spiritual gift, is whatever kind of gift. The Bible says the gift of a man can single-handedly pick you where you are, take you out and exalt you. It can. It can. I tell you, it can. Hallelujah. The man called Reinhard Bonke. He said he was considered by everybody to be a dollar. What people call a dollar. Complete dollar. Dollar IQ low. Everything low. But one day he discovered that there was the gift of God in his life. And today hundreds of thousands of people all over the world celebrate this man. Called Reinhard Bonke. His name is synonymous to soul winning. Because he discovered the gift and it created space for him among the great. It ushered him. When you are mentioning great people in history, you will mention him. Men who have done great things for the kingdom. Are you listening to me? In history, there's a woman called Mother Teresa. Didn't have the ability to heal the sick and do all of this, but she discovered that she had a gift in her. She refined it to a point that she gave it and gave her life and forever history will remember her. Are you hearing me? The gift of a man. I want you to know that there is an ability in you. Nobody here is a biological accident. I know you've been hearing it. Ah, your parents plan for four children and you are the fifth one. You just came. And every time they see you, they say, see, we didn't prepare for you. So you, you better know this thing. You are stubborn. No wonder we didn't prepare for you. And for some of us, these words have entered us. But I'm speaking to you tonight. That out of the six billion people in the earth, there is still space for those who are ready to make their... See, at the top, there is space. The congestion is always below. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you can pay the price to rise to the top, you will sit there and be wondering, 90% of the world's wealth is controlled by less than 10% of the world's population. And they left the remaining 10%. They spread it across and flung some in Africa. And everybody is running like rats. Whereas somebody can arise. A man called Wole Soinka got up and looked and said, Look, the boundaries of Africa will not stop me. He knew that he had something. See, I want you to be persuaded. Persuaded. It always does not look like it can make you great until you see the way men celebrate it. Matthew Ashimolo, hawk bread in this area. Some of our parents bought bread from him. While they were eating it, he was prophesying, Lord, the world will hear me. You say, I bring bread, 20 naira you take. Yet, this guy was moving within a short period of time now he has commanded what we call apostolic territorial legislation that's what he's doing in London but acres and hectares of land that they would never give to a black person and he's legislating on behalf of heaven a man called Sondia Delaja till date he does not speak fluently he got up and went to a communist country Ukraine and stayed there let a part of those who led right now he's among the fourth most influential people in that state 80 percent of the people in his church are whites he has led a revival and broken some barriers say after me my gift say it my gift will make room for me let me share with you a little story they know about it years ago i went to a particular bank in this country to go and beg for loan I just entered promising, I believe God. 
spoke in tongues, fasted, prayed, I got up. You know, there's a way they can look. You see, let me tell you, people have, be careful. I'm warning you now in advance. Be careful the way you, you turn people down. Because let me tell you, it does not show. The Bible says, now it does not yet appear. Went to squat in my friend's house in Abuja. I got up, went to the bank, met them. Told them I was begging for loan. These people dribbled me, dribbled me, made a fool out of me, embarrassed me in the bank. I didn't, I said, what is all this thing? And I laughed. I said, one day, they will call me. Are you hearing that? One day. What's the name of this guy that ran for second uh, vice president? Tunde Bakari. A bank came and met him and said, Sir, we are begging you to collect a loan of $10 million. We want to give you. No capital. The name of the capital is human capital. Do you know what human capital is? You and your reputation is what will be a, a collateral. So banks are looking for Dangote and looking for this and then some of you run there and they say, get out of this place. We are looking for people who have used their gifts. Tell yourself, no man will mock your God in your lifetime. This is what has happened to some of you. You see your father stand, no rent, and a landlord will stand and blast all of you, blast you, say, look at you, pretty for nothing. Eh? You are all these kind of Nigerian people. Just laugh. And say you will invite him when you are cutting the scissors of the duplex you are building for your parents. The gift of a man. The gift of a man. The gift of a man. The gift of a man makes room for him. I'm speaking to some of you. Some of you think, don't just think I'm motivating you. I'm speaking to your spirit. I told myself I will never go anywhere where anybody will look and I'll have to chicken out and hide myself. I have something. I have something. I have something. When you find it, it so happens that God carved your own like your fingerprints. God is not a fool. He will not put competition around. He gave you your uniqueness. What is your uniqueness? When you know your uniqueness and you are persuaded about it, you found your secret of glory in life. Did I do something here? I think I've done something. Did, was it me? Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. I have seen people in this life that years ago, they would look at me, they wouldn't, some of them, <laughs> let me tell you something. Ah! Life. Somebody who will be driving you today, tomorrow will be the one who it will be the honor. I've gone to homes that I went years ago. Years ago. They were looking at me like some of these unserious people. But now, when they hear you are coming, it's as if God is coming. Say, say after me, the gift of a man. Yes. The gift of a man makes room for him. Makes room. The brothers of Joseph did not realize his gift. They didn't know it would be an honor one day for them to see their own brother. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. One time they went. And suddenly they found out that their brother was now the prime minister in Egypt. Could it be that some of you who are sitting down today, somebody who has looked at you and said, Tolu, one day the person will say, Tolu, please talk to XYZ for us. May God make you a wonder. May God stop you from being small. What is that gift? What is that gift? For some of you is wisdom. When you think of Benny Hinn, you think of the healing anointing. When you think of Aura Roberts, you think of healing. When you think of JJ Okocha, you think of football. Mark Zuckerberg, you think of IT. What is your uniqueness? Define what makes you different. That's what the world will pay for. What makes you different? The greatness is not in your similarity. The greatness is in your difference. When you master your difference, you will exchange it for honor. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Praise the Lord. The world is full of people. What is your difference from others? Do you know it? Do you even believe it? 
There are many musicians in this country equally anointed. But when you call Sinach, there is a, there is a, a carving. She has carved a brand for herself. When you mention Frank Edwards, they, they not only discovered their gifts, they discovered what was unique about that gift. That's what makes you priceless. When you discover that gift, you will know that you are not one of the many people roaming around the earth. Oh, there is something about your life. You may be in the same class. You may be in the same office. But let me tell you, you are not the same. You are not the same. You may be doing ministry. Everybody is doing prophetic ministry. Everybody is doing apostolic ministry. Everybody is doing evangelical ministry. What is it about yours? What is it about yours? Every great man in life not only discovered his or her gift, but the uniqueness about that gift. What is your uniqueness? What makes you stand out from the rest? I'm asking you, and God is asking you, what makes you stand out from the remaining people? Listen, when you find your gifts, the next step is to begin to refine it. This is the hardest part. Because your gift at its default state is not good enough to make you marketable. Do you hear what I'm saying? Refine yourself. Build yourself. A lot of us don't do this. Christians are very, very, very lazy people. You know what made us lazy? The fact that there is something called the favor of God. There is something called the wealth of the wicked that will be transferred to the righteous. And people just say, my wealth, come, find your way into my pocket. <laughs> Look, let me tell you. People have been confessing that thing from the day you were born. And they thought it just works like that till today it has not come. When the Bible says the wealth of the wicked, people just, people just, just craft that thing and pick out what they want. The wealth of the wicked will come into, the Bible says, God give it to a man that is good in his sight, wisdom. And he said to the unbeliever, he give it to heap and to travail so that he will bring it. It is your wisdom. Hallelujah. What is your gift? What is your uniqueness? What makes you stand out? What makes you stand out? Among all of the graduates in Nigeria, what do you think will make you get a job? What do you think will make you become a CEO? What do you think will make you become an uncommon? I preached a message, extra, what did I, what, extraordinary anointing. What makes you extraordinary? Hallelujah. What makes you extraordinary? It's not your place of birth. It's not even whether you are from a royal family or not. What makes you different from other people? If I write a book today, what is the difference between my book and that of David Ibiome or that of Bishop Oyedeko or that of Paul Enenche? What is the difference? Many of you like doing the same things. That's why you are not moving anywhere. This is how a lot of people. We, like, we think it will work because you are doing copy and paste. There is beauty in being unique. Are you listening? There are even, even among bad people, there are some arm robbers that are notable because they were unique. Their degree and strategy of arm robbery was so touching. They said, no, I won't steal like the rest. This thing is common. There is a strategy. This follow, follow attitude is good to follow people, but you must follow with wisdom. Many of you, every time God is telling you move left and you see a crowd moving right, you think you are wrong. A whole nation can be wrong. That a thing is popular does not mean it is right. The path of greatness is a lonely path. Few people follow it. That's why you will not find many people. You will think you are making a mistake. Wait until you arrive there. Everybody will turn and say, ah, I need pastors in that journey. Hallelujah. What is your gift? Do you realize that if you take that gift, some of us is splatting 
just platting. Do you know that if the Lord anoints it and wisdom comes upon that gift, you will be able to establish something that will make you so influential you can legislate for the kingdom. Are you listening to me? A lot of people say, Billy Graham, all the presidents go to greet him. But what people do not know is that it was part of his life's goal. He believed that he was called to evangelize to great people. His, he really didn't believe his gift was just normal evangelism. He believed that he was called to evangelize to great people. He sent them hundreds of telegrams again and again. They kept bouncing him. He didn't stop. What you see or what you have seen is the reward of many years. There are some of you, God has spoken a lot of things. God has told you. Some of you will own banks. Some of you will own corporations. Hallelujah. You started selling recharge card, nothing happened. People just say, and you know believers have this ugly way. Once you start something, nobody buys it. They say, oh God, leave this thing. You know, if God is in it, speed will come, favor will come. It is lack of the understanding of the principles of the kingdom. You can never know success until you know failure. In the school of greatness, your greatest asset is your failure. Are you listening to me? Are you following me? I'm teaching you something very powerful. My gift can make room for me. My gift can make room for me. Worship team. Roti means rehearsing all the time. Hallelujah. He's been with us for years. We've, we've gone, I know how much he has this morning because he believes. This is, a, this is a master student. I think he should have rounded up his masters. But he just believes that there is something upon this. And he's taking it all the way. Tomorrow, presidents will call him and he'll just be playing. And they'll sign checks of millions and you'll be wondering and saying, ah, ah just keyboard you you play your own as you are playing they just they point they will even talk to you they'll just say this way go out those who do decoration do you know there are those who do decoration for presidential figures there's this guy called yam yal yam press jordan what's his name i i heard that he was in zaria here is that true now he got up with his publishing and today he has become a multi-millionaire Yet, there were others who started before him. This afternoon, we went to pray for um, one of our ladies' father in Shik. And while we were passing somewhere, we saw this. I mean, we were talking about people who were pushing, who used to push wheelbarrow. Jakes was saying, ah, this wheelbarrow business used to sell before. And we were talking. And then Wale pointed one man's shop and said, this man, it was by pushing that wheelbarrow. Right now, he has one of the largest shops. Say, I will not let men despise my gift. Say it. Many of you have stopped developing your gift because you have been lied to. Some of you can cook and all you can cook is Amala. And you, you have a dream of having somewhere just Amala. People laugh as you self. Abba. You want to disgrace the world. See, greatness lies in the bosom of those who can go the extra mile with their gifts. Refuse to let men talk you down. It's better to take a step and fail honorably. They will clap for you. The one who tried and failed is better than the one who didn't try and is just making noise. Oh, pass the ball to number five. Ah, you would have just passed that in now. If you are taking that penalty this way, look at simple penalty. See, you see goalkeeper talk is cheap. Somebody is sweating in the field for 90 minutes. Somebody else is talking. Say if it was me, that thing, the way he did it like you, that it would have been a goal now. That's how many people in life are. How can a graduate not get a job? How can blah, 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 and they're not doing anything? You're in 200 level, your lecturer told you, ah, you're a nice student. Say, I cannot understand why graduates are not getting jobs. Then you finish and carry your CV to the same man that commended you. <laughs> and he says, get out of my office. You're like, ah, ah. Say after me, my gift will make room for me. Say my gift will make me great. Say one more time, my gift 
will make me great. Yes. Some of you are architects. You are good but not very good. And God is telling you, refine that gift. One day you will get, let me tell you something. Once you can provide solution, nobody cares about your age or what you can do or who, are you hearing me? The gift of a man defies race and age and anything. Once you see people discriminating you, your gift is not notable enough. When your gift is notable enough, you will break every kind of barrier. Hallelujah. What do you have in your house? And the woman said, nothing. Probably somebody said, me, I can just make people laugh. That's my own. Everybody calls me a dollar. Zero in math, zero in English. P in such as, uh, uh, you know, just anything, literature. But you can speak small. At least make people laugh. Why don't you say, Lord, if you can use this. This is what Reinhard Bonke said. He said, Lord, if you can use this, then use me. Do you know your beauty too is a gift? Hello? There are cynical guys that anytime they see a pretty lady, they are just angry. Why? I don't know. Say, Look, don't think because you are beautiful in this place. Beauty is nothing. It's a lie. Beauty is something. Beauty is a gift. The book of Esther, there was no pastor, no prophet, nothing, just a beautiful woman. She was the ambassador of God. Many of you feel guilty for being fine as if you gave back to yourself. It has happened. It has happened. Cherish it. Build it. And use it for the glory of God. Don't use it to go to men in TJ Palace. Tell yourself this beauty. Could it be that God will make you marry the minister of finance? So that when you are there as Esther, when they want to cut corners, you say, uh-uh. Do you believe this? I want you to be wealthy. I want you to be blessed. Don't let anybody fool you that money will take you to hell. It's not true. Money only amplifies what you are. If you are a thief, money will make you a bigger thief. If you are, if you are immoral, money will give you more options. You can now rent a bigger hotel. If you love God and have a desire to advance his kingdom, money will make you do that better. You will build roads. You will build schools. When I went to Shika, I was sharing with them. I said, one of my dreams in life is to have a very big hospital. This is why you need to be successful. Say, I will be successful. Don't feel guilty about it. Say it. Say, I'll be rich. I'll be blessed for the kingdom. Yes. Can you give God your beauty? Yes, I have nothing but everybody keeps telling me I'm a pretty person. Why don't you bring it and say, Lord... You can use this. Anoint it. Let this beauty make room for me. And take me to a place where I'm in a position of influence to legislate for the kingdom. Some of you are very intelligent. People are sweating, reading overnight. You wake up that morning, one hour to the exam and browse and get A. You think it's ordinary. It's an ability of God. Why don't you stretch it through and say, I will get to a position where I will do great things. When they make me a vice chancellor because of my academic prowess, I will now legislate on behalf of heaven. When they bring the names of people who don't qualify, we kick them out and say, no, this person may be poor, but he deserves a chance. Give him a chance. Are you listening to me? Some of you will put scholarships for less privilege. Some of you will name it after your accomplishments. You will be so great, they will name a foundation after you. Joshua Selman Foundation. No, no, look. It will happen. The beauty of success is that it depends on you and God. It will happen. It will happen. You know how many women have named their children Joshua? Look at how long Matthew's surname is Ashimo Lowo. The whole world is calling it. They have never complained that it's too long. When you become great, when you become great in life, when you become great in life, I watched a DVD of Apostle Johnson Suleiman. He went for a crusade. When he came down, I saw how the God, they interviewed him in CNN for 12 minutes. 
Nobody will say you are a Nigerian or you are an African. No. Listen, are you going to remain where you are? Are you not seeing your family members crying? Is it not obvious that they need a savior? How many of you have seen your father come under pressure? No rent, no nothing. What are you doing about it? I told myself I'll come to a point in my life where I'll put all my family members on perpetual salary for their lifetime till they go to be with Jesus Christ. Brothers, how would you like that kind of thing? If wishes were horses, beggars would beg to ride, but wishes are not horses. But you can turn that wish into a horse by applying these principles I'm teaching you and you will ride on it gloriously. What do you have in your house? This is what God is asking you. What do you have? What do you have in your house? Don't sit down and be admiring great people and say, hey, lucky for them, oh, you people have gone. Don't pray for us. Say, I'm going to do something. Say it. If you know your uniqueness, how many books are you reading? How many books? How many books are you reading? Readers are leaders. How many books are you reading in the area of your call? If you are snapping this camera, if you cannot mention five people in this country that are good or around, I know you are not serious. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You, is that, God is calling me into a healing ministry. Show me whose DVDs you have, who God has called into that healing ministry. Where you are, you are reading how they started. When you go to my house, you don't find, okay, there's, there, there are two movies now. He did the Lord of the Ring is still there. Then this Tyler Perry's film. I can't remember again. I can't even remember the name. But there are people that have modeled what I see God making me become. And I sit down. I study. I want to empower God's people. I want to make them ambassadors. Set them on fire. Do you have a unique grace? Do you have a unique gift? Are you doing anything about it? Some of you just sit down and keep pitying yourself and disturbing those who are moving towards their destiny. Try this life, self. Now, wow. If we were abroad by 18 years, they would have given us this. If you, listen, I'm not laughing this night. If you don't stop that attitude, you will find that you are 50 years and you are still talking like that. Now, you know there are some people who believe it's just nemesis. That's just how life is for us. Naughty used to work in our family. My sister too is like that. No job, no marriage. Me, ma'am, like that. No job, no marriage. As if you do not know that you can change it. You go to a place of employment, they kick you out, laugh, and say one day we will drink tea with the CEO of this company. We went to Shika and one, one, one man just stopped us. One guard man that is tried where he was doing his job. The guy stopped us and said, we are not going anywhere. We were trying to plead him. He said, we are not going anywhere. And Shade's husband is like the ogre of the whole, you know, the security company that employs the people. So I called Shade. I said, Todd, they've stopped us. So we wanted to go and pray for our father. And she was just happy. She just got one bigger guy. The guy just marched and came. When they came, at once they allowed us and we waved the man and we left. Be careful what you call impossible because somebody will come and make it possible. Would have, there were some people who were waiting there. But when Chade's husband came, he saluted him and we were happy. We were partakers of the glory. It taught me a lesson. It taught me a powerful lesson. Impossible is a relative statement. They can close the door for others and say, sorry, it cannot be opened. Sorry, it cannot be opened. You will be amazed to see how they will open it for somebody. I told you there are some people that bank on Saturdays and Sundays too. Is that true? It's only for the masses that bank ends 3 p.m. on Friday. They say, oh yeah, go out, let's lock this bank. But there are people on Sunday because of one man, they'll open the bank and say, your excellency, sir, please. 
We went to Starcoms and I saw one account officer sitting there. Why will a bank give an account officer to come and sit in a, in a, in a telecommunications company? Some of you, you will have in your own house. You say, so how much are we sending for this school now? Send 10 million for this school, 10 million for this one, 50 million for this. I hear that there is a church building. Send 15 million for it. God punish the devil. Let me talk like Dr. <laughs> Let me talk like Dr. Ebert Amina. He likes it. God punish the devil. Say, I will be great in life. I'm inspiring you tonight. This was the decision I made years ago. Let me tell you the truth. This decision will cost you something. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you willing to pay the price? The woman said, nothing except a little cruise of oil. What did the prophet tell her? He said, go and borrow. You, you are not permitted to borrow oil, but you can borrow vessels. What are vessels? Books, DVDs, experiences. Sit down under the feet of mentors and great people that have gone ahead and listened. I've told you, this attitude of saying we are all equal, we are equal in Christ. But when it comes to the school of greatness, wisdom is ability to recognize difference. There are people I will never, no matter how crazy I am, I will never, if I ever get to a meeting and they are seated there, I must salute and recognize them before speaking. Wisdom, Mike Modoc says, is the ability to recognize difference. Many of you don't know difference at all. Hallelujah. Doctors don't go about looking for sick patients. They establish an institution and say, if you are sick, find your way here. Is that true? If you really want to be treated, what will you do? You have to go to the hospital. Is that true? Many of us want the doctors to come and find us and treat us. Sorry, life does not work like that. Get up and begin to do something about your life. Make up your mind. Five o'clock in the morning, I'm awake. How can a young man be sleeping by 10, 11, 12? You yawn by 12 when others are already writing their names in time. And you, you wonder why things will not work for you. Let me tell you, God is a merciful God, but he's a just God. I know the number of times I sleep in a day. I'm always building myself. Nobody will deceive me. Compared to where I'm going, this is just a step out of the cave. Are you listening to me? This is rehearsals. I tell people, ministry has not started yet. When we get to that level of kingdom influence, where we will not talk too much, at that time I won't be shouting like this again. It's when you don't have results, you shout too much. Charles and Francis Hunter say, one miracle is worth a thousand words. If Michael Jackson only said, Jesus is Lord. That statement with that level of influence will bring more harvest than what we'll be doing every week in Zaria here for one year. Is that true? Everybody say influence. This is what your gift. Let me tell you very quickly before we pray. What your gift can do for you. Number one. Your gift and your skills when refined and developed will create opportunities everybody say opportunities your gift your skill when refined when developed my friend a military man took me to a place in abuja when i entered that place is a is a spa place a beauty place they took me there to bath me. Ah! When I entered that place, I knew that there was difference between clipper and clipper. Barbie saloon and Barbie saloon. Barbers and barbers. The way they treated me when I sat down and they barbed me. In my mind, I was saying, is this me? Hallelujah. When they finish, they put a lotion. I don't know what it is. My head just foamed like Father Christmas. And they told me, enter this room. I entered. I was enjoying. I don't care what it is. I don't need to know. I will employ somebody who knows when I'm blessed. Hallelujah. And when they washed my head and I finished, they appreciated me. Ah! I said, what kind of place is this? And they showed me the owner. A Lebanese woman who was also walking quietly. Nobody even knew. 
when we finished everything, time came for bill. He said 600 naira. For barbing. That's what you will pay when you meet someone who has refined his gifts. The same food, a cup of coffee in Transcorp Hilton is 2005. Everybody say cup of coffee. How much is coffee? Next cafe, this type they shake there. How much? 50 naira. If you price 20 naira. Yet it's the same thing you pay. This decoration you are seeing. There are people who can decorate over 2 million, some even 5 million. You will name your price by your refining of your gifts. Write it, your gift and your skill will create opportunities. If Rotimi continues this a day, see, how the opportunity will come is none of your business. Just know it will come. The Bible says, just like you do not know the way of the wind, or how bones are formed in the womb of how a child, so also you do not know the way of God. How it will happen is none of your business. Hallelujah. One of my uncles called me, my father's friend. Years ago, when they come to our house, we are the ones who run to go and wash the car. How are you? We go and wash. I said, no problem. I will wash it. He called me of recent and said, ah, ah, I've been hearing a lot. We are seeing the things you are doing. I said, bless God. Oh. He said, when will you come now? We need to discuss. There's something we need to sit down man to man. I said, that's right. <laughs> when, when your father starts talking to you like that, it's a sign that you are making progress. When your father says, there are some things I want to discuss with you, but I, when, let everybody sleep. Come out. Clap for yourself. You are trying. That's, that's a sign. When your father says, look, there are some secrets we don't tell people. Who are the people? When your gift starts showing, there are doors that will start opening. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are many of you, you think you are too young to enter some doors. No, sir. No, ma. If you, if you refine yourself, I promise you that door will open. There are places I've entered today by the grace of God. I know there is no human way under the sun, under the sun that I will enter that place. Hallelujah, I have a gift. Laugh at me, the gift is in me. You will never go out. God gave it to me. The way God did it, God put the gift. The only way to enjoy the gift is to carry me along with the gift. You can't carry the gift and leave me. There are people today, if the gift of God was not in my life, they will see me and just his and pass. But God orchestrated it. You must need me because you need that gift. Oh, I celebrate his name. That's why I rejoice. Such as I have, go and borrow vessels. This is what the prophet said. Sister, borrow vessels. Read the books. You may, if you borrow vessels, the gift will expand. The oil was there. The problem was there was no vessel. Esther was beautiful, but her beauty was not yet sufficient to take her to the king's palace. Is that true? She was beautiful. Many of you are sitting on gifts today that you are paying for. During my birthday, the things that people brought for me, it was as if it was wedding. You know how they finish wedding and you pack the gifts. I just sat down. I say years ago, I did my birthday alone. Ah, somebody's after two weeks. You say, ah, is it not your birthday? Your birthday 25th. Is it not? Am I wrong? Say you are right. So he said, Oh, happy birthday. But there is something that can happen. One year before your birthday, somebody is preparing because of your gift. Who is God speaking to this night? Who is God speaking to this night? Who is God telling tonight that if you can pay attention, we are discussing on the subject of success. Some of you have been sitting on treasure. You are in the middle of an ocean begging for water. You are in the middle of an ocean. You are an artist. You are watching on TV drawings that are not half your capacity. They are rewarding the people whereas you are there. When I watch preachers on TV preach, I tell you with all humility, I just get up and I rejoice. I say, God, you tried for me. We're on our way coming. 
and I get up, I rejoice. I say, Lord, I may not know everything, but at least I know something. I know something that I can preach anywhere and not be ashamed. Come on now. Some of you, the business acumen that you have, even the CEOs of banks and cooperatives do not have. Listen, that you have not entered that place does not mean you don't have it. Who would have known that Zuckerberg's gift was so good like this? It takes time to prove it. But that does not mean it's not there. Some of our worshippers, some of these people you are seeing, the gifts that they have, you will see them tomorrow and say, I know this person. I know that person. Abel Damina was born in Samina Kahir. Right here in this area. Who cares where I was born now? Who cares where I was raised? Even if it was with firewood we used. To prepare and cook. It's, 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 look, when you are blessed, you are blessed. When you know it, you have known it. If it opens the door, it will open the door forever. It will open the door this week and close it next week. Say, I have a solution for the world. Say it, I have a solution. Some of you are music groups. Some of you are individuals. Who has talked you down? I'm speaking to somebody this night. Who has talked you down? Somebody ate your food and said, God forbid. If your restaurant is the only one, I will just, let me, I will learn how to cook by myself. Allow the person. Who has talked you down? I want you to know tonight that the spirit of the Lord is upon you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The spirit of creativity. Bel Bezalel. That spirit came upon him and he was given the mission of crafting. I'm speaking to you. Who has talked you down, my brother? Who has talked you down? See, many of you see us today and you think we were born this way. Wait till you hear some stories. When you see great people, you think they had opportunities to just climb. Let me tell you, it's not true. You don't want to know the things they have survived. Greatness lies in the bosom of those who have survived what others cannot survive. I don't care what you think you are going through. I, I slept on speakers and amplifier. It will never happen again forever. There were days we did not eat. There were days we trekked distances. But we did not allow what happened to us. I, there was a day I trekked from the roundabout where Chiki Republic. I passed Chiki Republic. I was hungry. I could not do anything about it. I trekked from there to aviation. What have you gone through that you think is stopping you? Some of you is complex. Just inferiority complex. Every time you want to rise, the devil keeps telling you, you know you did this, you know you are this, you know you are that. We are here tonight to call that devil a liar. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We are calling that devil a liar. There are some of you that the gift God has given you is a supernatural prophetic grace. Some of you is an apostolic ability. Every time in your dreams you see the whole world. Some of you are book writers that will write on common books. The gift of a man. He said, borrow vessels. When she borrowed the vessels, she entered. He said, lock your door. There are some trainings you don't do in the open. You must close your door. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Many of you that like open, there are some times you need to close your door. Because what God will do in you is only him that can do alone. You will close your door. And she began to pour it. Do you know how, how many vessels? The pain it took for her to carry the vessels. While she was carrying the vessels, she said, I'm on, I'm on my way out. Never, never to be in this situation again. You are the solution to the prayer of your families. Some of you, many of them never experienced some things. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But could it be that God brought you tonight to speak to you? There are some of you who have been saying, oh, the government is not giving job, this and that. Could it be that God is trying to speak to you? I'm challenging you. Take what I'm saying seriously because we are going to pray. We will soon rise up to pray. And when it's time to pray, I want you to pray your life out. I told myself I am great. I'm great. I'm great. 
Joshua Selman, you are great. I speak it to myself every day. The world will hear you. You are a sign and a wonder. The anointing that is upon you is not common. Don't trivialize it. Give God thanks, but celebrate it. If it's common, go and get it in the market. Hallelujah. The gift that God has given you, Oga John, there are photographers around, but it's not common. Believe it and take it seriously. There are some of you that have all kinds of gifts. You are administrators, uncommon administrators. As young as you are, you can sit down and administrate. You didn't read this admin. Could that gift take you? There are some of you who can write proposals. There are many of you who can do a lot of things. I'm speaking to you tonight. Wake up. Call your name and say, wake up. One to go. See, prophesy it from the spirit. One more time. One to go. Yes. The Bible says, awake thou that sleepest. That means you have been sleeping. Awake thou that sleepest. And Christ will give you Somebody called me and said, Josh, at, at this level of your life, what are you doing? I said, preparing for an extraordinary life. This is what I'm doing right now. This is what I do every day. When people get up and run, everybody is going for work, everybody is doing, I'm preparing for an extraordinary life. Oh, and when the master is done with me, he will present me as a masterpiece, a symbol of his wisdom and artistry. I speak to you. You will hear this message many years after now. When you stand and watch the world clap for you and tears stream down your face, you will tell them, this award is given to me in London, but I was trained in Zaria. And I did not despise the chastening of the Lord. Many of you, this teaching is hard on you. It's a wake-up call, but despise not the days of chastening. I bring you a word. Let the devil not lie to you. You are great. You are on your way to happen. I don't care how many times you have failed in life. When you become successful, when a woman has a miscarriage 50 times and she gives birth the 51st time, nobody will ask her how many times you had miscarriage. We don't care. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I am somebody I am somebody. I am somebody. I had that song years ago. We went to sing in a church. And while they were singing it, they were laughing. That song entered my spirit till today. Tell yourself, I am somebody. It's time to stop this false humility. And start believing in what God. This is what koinonia is all about. Intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Partnership with him to shake the world. I will never. If, if I tell myself I am not great. I'm lying. It's not humility. It's foolishness. Say I am great. Say it one more time. Say it one more time. Say it one more time. Say, more time. Say the world will testify that I am great. Say, the world will testify that I'm great. Say, I will walk at it. I may cry, but I will walk at it. It will cost me, but I will walk at it. Understanding. You are paying the price. Some of you will be mighty women of God. As you are looking at me, you, you, God has already shown you. It does, you, are, you are wondering, how shall these things be like Mary? He said, thou art favored, thou, how did he even put it, that salutation. Hail Mary, mother of grace. He said, thou art favored among other women. She said, what meaneth these salutations? How shall these things be? Don't, you don't need to ask how it shall be. Let me tell you, whether you are a mother here, whether you are a father, whether you are a sister, a brother, young or old, at any level, if you can allow God to take a hold, I have found my servant David. And with my holy oil, I have anointed him. What has God given you? I'm speaking to you. What has God given you? Oh, God has given you leadership. Take it to the extreme. Let that gift make room for you.
God has given you grace for ministry. Take it to the extreme. God has given you business acumen. Stand up and establish those conglomerates. Don't let no devil talk nonsense to you. Let the employment of Nigeria not threaten you. Tell yourself, I will arise. I will create jobs. Thousands of jobs. You can be a lady and God is telling you, you are entering into the finance world. Don't sit down and let people call you a weaker vessel. It's time to begin to silence those demonic voices. You've never held 10,000 of your money, so what? Your gift will bring for you something your entire family did not hold. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Everybody close your eyes just in one minute before we pray. Close your eyes where you are. And just begin to meditate in one minute. I'd like you to begin to see yourself the champion that God has made you. I'd like you to begin to see yourself solving the problems of mankind. You are an ambassador. See yourself shaking away the limitation of your culture. See yourself shaking away that limitation. Who told you you cannot get there? I'm speaking to your spirit. Just close your eyes and meditate. I have found my servant David. I have a gift. I have an ability given by God. I have an ability. Men may not understand it now. Men may not understand it now. It's still in the process of refining. It's still in the process of refining. But when God is done with you, my sister, I tell you, although you cannot speak good English now, I am telling you, when that gift is done, you will stand near scholars and it will be an honor for them to stand with you. Yes, I know you came from the village. Yes, I know you came from the village. You've not afforded a good meal. But who told you that gift cannot take you? I'm speaking to you. Yes, you have not gotten admission. You wrote jam 20 times. But who told you that gift cannot rise up? I'm speaking to you. Yes, your wayek didn't work well. Yes, you started that business and failed. But who told you that anointing is not in you? Oh, yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I don't care what has happened. Yes, it is. Who told you that that anointing, the first day you prayed for a sick person, the person was not healed. In fact, he died. But God told you you have been called to take his healing power to the nations. Do you believe it? There are many of you that are, are TV hosts. God is taking you to do mighty things. Some of you are beauticians. Some of you are mighty men and women. Joshua the high priest stood before God. And Satan was there to accuse him. And he says, Satan, is this not a reed that I've taken out of fire? The Lord rebuke you. At any level you can start. Hear me tonight. I'm speaking to you. At any level you can start. Joseph, in one night, he slept as an ordinary slave. He woke up the next day and his gift made room for him. Somebody's gift will make room for him. Rise up on your feet. Hallelujah. Now in the next five to ten minutes, please, if you want to scatter yourself around, I want you to pray. Let me tell you, if I, if I say prayer and I see some of you looking at me, I'll come and hold your hands and pray with you here. Please, if you are sleeping, wake up. We are finished. Wake up. It's time to pray. Inside and outside. There's no space for you inside. Go outside to pray. I want us to pray. The Bible says, This charge I give unto you, my son Timothy, that you war a good warfare with the prophecy. Many of some of you don't know these giftings. You are going to pray and say, Lord, what did you put in me? What did you put in me? I'm tired of inferiority and complex. I'm tired of being thought out of as a second class person. What did you put in me for your glory? That's prayer point number one. Lift your voice right now and begin to pray. Come on now, Koinonia. You won't pray like this. You won't pray like this. Lord, what is that treasure? What do I have in my house? Young and old, pray.
pray, 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 pray. Sekete prekete ke pekete ke topo kosopata. Rekete broske pai. Maka prakata. Lekoto broske bariata. A prokoto pekete pekete bananaba. Make sure you are praying. Lord, what is that gift? What is the rod of God in my hand? I'm tired of trying to look like everybody. I'm tired of trying to talk like everybody. Koinonia, pray. Shekete te kosopeka. Sempre kete kepos. Rekete proskope e kotoriata. Mambro to sekete. Rekete posa. Lord, show me my uniqueness. Show me. He said, call on to me and I will answer. I will show you. I will show you. I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Show me, oh God. Show me, oh God. Come on, Koinonia, pray. Show me, oh God. Show me, oh God. My father did not see it. My mother did not see it. Show me, oh God. There is a generation waiting for a revelation of the glory of God that is in me. Kapate prekete koto prekete. Pray. Pray. You came here tonight to pray. What do you have in your house? What do you have? Where is that ability that can make you stand anywhere that will also give you a seat among the great? Going on here, pray. I don't like the way some of you are praying. Come on, pray. Kate pokoto pekete, sekete te pokoto sa, rekete kete pokoso ba, rapaka prosa kaya, ma prosko pedia. Contend in the spirit. Every power of darkness that wants you not to discover that gift in you, the Lord rebuke it. Pray. It will come out. It will come out. It will come out. By the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Forget about where you are now. Forget about where you are today. Forget about what you don't have. Forget about what has happened. Pray. Pray. Invest into your tomorrow. Invest into your tomorrow. What is it, oh God? I call unto you. He said, call unto me. I will answer. I will show you great and mighty things. He will show you in a dream. He will show you in a vision. He will show you through prophetic confirmation. He will show you through your passion. He will show you through your desires. Rekete kete prokoto bananaba, rapa kata prekesa, em protoko preke, elekete prosko paria, ma prokoto prekete. Show me, oh God, show me, oh God, the gift that will end poverty in my lineage. Show me that gift that will end poverty. Show me that gift that will bring my family to greatness. Show me that gift. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. You're going to speak and say, Lord, I received a baptism of diligence to refine and develop my gifts. Are you hearing me? 
Some of us, hear me. Some of us, you need to reduce your time of pointless visitations. Going to go and meet friends and gossiping and discussing about things that have no bearing to your future. Are you hearing me? You're going to see whether it is in the rain, in the sun, you're going to tell yourself, I may cry, I may weep, I may not look fine now as I'm doing it, but I'm ready. Hear me? Some of you, by this prayer, you will need to cut away from godless and unserious friends. Well, hold on. I'm speaking to some of you because for some of you, it is your friends and your company that are keeping you from being great. Your, this friend thing, love is a command, association is not. There's nobody that says you must have many friends to show you are making progress in life. They may gossip about you. They may misunderstand you. Don't worry. When you become great, it will settle the matter. Are you hearing me? You are going to pray now and say, Lord, diligence. The Bible says, see thou a man diligent in his business. He shall not stand before mean men. He shall stand before kings. Lift your voice and pray. Diligence to fast. Diligence to pray. Diligence to study. Day and night. Diligence to read books. Diligence to listen to tapes. Diligence to go for workshops. Keto be ketosa. Rekoto leke prosketia. I receive a baptism. A fresh baptism. A fresh baptism. A fresh baptism. Are you praying, Koinonia? Are you praying? Leke teke teke lebosh. Leke pro sekete lebosha. Ma pros ko sekete bosha. Rekete le kosia. Pray. Say I break free from ungodly movies. Ungodly associations. Ungodly places. For the sake of my destiny. I pay the price. I pay the price. I saw the seed. I may weep, but I saw the seed. I can't be a failure in life. Shake it, go to break it, bolo suba. Break it, bros, get it, keleba. I'm break kotoshka, rakata leko sopa. Yes, you are praying your way to greatness. You are praying your way to greatness. You are praying your way to prosperity. You are praying your way to generational blessings. You are praying your way to extraordinary impact. My sister, pray, 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 pray. Haleka prosekete. Forget about your failures and pray. Forget about your failures and pray. Say, Lord, I will start again. I used to set goals before, but now I'm backslidden. I used to watch videos every day. I used to listen to DVDs, but now I'm backslidden. But tonight, tonight, a baptism, fresh grace. I won't give up. I won't give up. Come on now. Arise. Let your dreams arise. Refuse to give up. God is faithful. Refuse to give up. Go back again. Do it again. Shake it. You are laboring in the spirit. Hallelujah. The last prayer point. Last prayer point for this night. Listen. Hear me. The last prayer point. You are going to pray. We just have about two more minutes left. You are going to pray. 
and send dangerous prophecies. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You're going to prophesy and tell yourself that top is for me. No devil will stop me. That top is a position God has prophesied over my life from his word. Lift your voice and pray. I'm meant for the top. Meant for the top. Meant for the top. In business, the top. In leadership, the top. In music, the top. Prophesy to yourself. An extraordinary academician. An extraordinary worshiper. Extraordinary musician. Extraordinary media giant. Extraordinary business mogul. Extraordinary apostle, extraordinary prophet, extraordinary evangelist. Pray, Nigeria, open up, open up. My gift is bringing me Abuja. Open up, Lagos. Open up, Port Harcourt. Open up, Kano. Open up, Jos. Open up, London. Open up. Israel open up China open up my gift is making room prophesy my gift is making room labor market open up Nigerian labor market open up your gift your gift gospel music industry open up generals are coming generals are coming doors of ministry open up miracle workers are coming fiery apostles are coming fiery prophets are coming nigeria open up ladies of excellence are coming Women of virtues are coming. The borders are coming. Nigeria, open up. Our ladies are coming. They are coming with the spirit of Elijah. They are coming. Entrepreneurs, business giants, business giants, billionaire philanthropists, healing ministers, miracle workers, reformers pray pray i'm coming i'm on my way nothing will stop me pain will not stop me persecution will not stop me criticism will not stop me discouragement will not stop me failure will not stop me i'm on my way there is a prophecy there is a prophecy I wore a good warfare. One more minute, prophesy. My gift is making room. It's making room. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Koinonia, hear me. Your gift is making room for you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Lift your hands. I want to prophesy to your life. I want you to receive it with all your heart. I prophesy that these hands that are lifted will remain lifted forever. These hands that are lifted will remain lifted forever. These hands that are lifted will remain lifted forever. I declare that for those of you who do not know what that gift and that uniqueness is, this night, this night, this night, may the angel of the Lord visit you in dreams, in visions. Receive dreams, receive visions, receive dreams, receive visions. Let your eyes be open. Hallelujah. 
I pray for those of you who are suffering from any kind of discouragement or laziness, mental laziness, spiritual laziness, physical laziness, and you don't have grace to develop your gifts this night, I pray that a fresh fire, a fresh baptism will fire you for diligence. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Fresh fire for diligence. Grace to read books. Grace to stay awake in the night. Grace to study principles. Hear me. Hear me. Those of you who have been talked down to. Those of you who they've told you. You have failed in one way or the other. Or all kinds of things have made you feel inferior. You are afraid to try. I pray for you now this night. In the name that is above all names. Receive grace to take steps. Take action. Over that business, take action. Over that job, submit the CV. Apply again. Apply again. Write the charm again. Apply again. Hallelujah. I pray for some of you who you are the only ones that are visionary in your family and it's bringing a lot of persecution. People don't know what you are. They don't even know that it's for their own good. Every time they castigate you, I pray right now in the name that is above all names, that devil that wants to orchestrate an event to discourage you right now this night lift up your heads all ye gates and be ye lifted all ye ancient doors i command that devil to be silenced in the name of jesus hallelujah for some of you your barriers are you don't know the books to read you don't know the dvds to buy you don't know who to meet i pray that spirit of god that gives direction the bible says you shall hear a voice from behind saying this is the way walking in it i prophesy this night receive direction for your destiny may the lord take you to the right books the right people the right anointings the right counsel the right dvds the right tapes the right mp3s in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lift your hands finally. Anyone here under any yoke of death that says you will not live to be at the top, lift your hands so you see the way death is killing people like chickens. I want to pray for you. You have no covenant with death. I'm telling you now. Hallelujah. There are families. The moment you rise up, death just comes to take people. I pray right now. The Bible says, in six things shall he deliver you, yea, in seven things. He said, in the time of famine you will laugh. I want to rebuke the hand of death. That death that kills people. Look at the way lecturers are dying. Look at the way people are just dying like chickens. A man will be standing, a car will come and carry him. In the name that is above all names, I declare, the blood of Jesus upon you exempts you for death it exempts you from death the blood is upon you you shall not die you shall not die you shall not die i speak to the earth i forbid it from receiving your body oh earth share ye the word of the lord by this apostolic grace i command the earth to reject your body Will not be a victim of accident in the name of Jesus the spirit that destroys men in accidents you are exempted from it in the name of Jesus you will not be a victim of Boko Haram or any act of terrorism you will not be a victim of any activity of thieves and armed robbers ladies you will not be a victim of rape or gang violence 
Lift your hands and give God thanks. I tell you, your spirit is fired up this night. Fear. Everybody say fear. Say in the name of Jesus, I refuse fear from my life. Let me explain what fear means to you. There are many of our family members that are afraid of taking steps. Afraid of getting filled with the Holy Ghost. Afraid of doing a lot of things. That one is a spirit. Are you getting my point? The fear that stops you from tithing. Kai! God, you save 5,000, 500. How much is left? That one is a spirit. Are you getting my point? Many of you do not know that fear is more dangerous. Listen. One spirit of fear can keep a congregation like this in the same level for decades. Fear. Fear that stops you from taking the steps that will bring the blessings of the Lord. Are you getting my point? Fear. Fear to break out of your comfort zone. Fear to take giant kingdom steps. That one is a spirit. God has not given us that kind of spirit. But of love, of power, and of a sound mind. Number two, disobedience. Listen, look at me. Uncontrolled, helpless disobedience in the life of a man is a classic Bible proof that you need help. What is disobedience? The inability to comply. The inability to take advantage of the grace of God and comply with the instructions and the terms of the spirit. The terms of the kingdom. That, that inability... It's not just about refusing. Many people who disobey do not want to. Is that true? They don't want to. Go and meet somebody who smokes. When he has finished everything and just sits down, you say, ah, John, why now? Say, oh boy, me too, I've, I've tried. Disobedience is a spirit. I'm going to show you from scripture. Ephesians 2 verse 2. How many disobedient believers do we have? Ephesians 2 verse 2. Thank you, Jesus. In, in which in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that walks in who? The sons of disobedience. When people walk in disobedience, perpetually, the extension of disobedience is what we call rebellion, stubbornness. All of these things are extensions of the manifestation of that spirit. So you tell the lady, sit down. Say, me. I must go out today. Have you seen people who all they want to know is the rule that has been set so that they will break it? They are like that. They just want to know, what did they say we should not do? They say, don't talk to these people. Say, today, even if it's this fence. You see them around secondary schools. They just put a rule. They say from today, no jumping this fence. The guys will start looking at the person they know will break the rule. And you'll be laughing. He will put himself under pressure to disobey. It's a spirit. It's a spirit for God's sake. There are people whose head is as strong. You are talking to them. They are listening to you like this. Already they have disobeyed you before you finish talking. Will you do this? Yes. Will you sit down? Yes. As soon as you leave, they are doing some. It's a spirit. Many, please parents, listen. If you are a parent here, listen to me. This is the mystery behind the rebellion of many of our children. The protocol will bear me witness. Last week, a woman was tired of her child. I'm sure maybe she's here with the boy. Tired of her son and just carried the boy and said, let's go for counseling. When they entered, the woman sat down. She didn't waste time. No beating around the bush. This is the boy I brought. You know, look, when mothers get tired, fathers are logical. They wouldn't take steps first. They want to look. How is my reputation going to be affected? Mothers say, let's go. When they sat down, it was in, in less than five minutes, this boy was free, but it was a spirit. Hallelujah. Please, are you getting this now? This is not supposed to make you hate people. 
It is the biblical revelation that can help you to love people. See, agape functions from the standpoint of a revelation. You must know something higher than somebody's stupidity to love him. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's not this teaching about agape. They just say, just love. No, you can't just love. If you are stealing my thing, why should I love you? Until I have a higher revelation that is greater than your act. So it gives me the impetus to love even when you do not deserve. Are you getting my point? So we put pressure on people in church. They say, just love. What is there? Are you the first person they stole your thing? Ha. The person is saying, do you know the pain I'm having? I say, just love. It's like that. It works for everybody. It's not like that. I'm telling you this night. Love is a function of a revelation. That's why the Bible says it has heights. It has depth. It has dimensions. There is a revelation that when you have, you can love even when people do not merit it. And they'll look at you and say, ah, ah, come, why is Steve still loving this person? And you know that you are functioning from a light that is higher than that which people see. It was on account of that that Jesus looked at the people who were killing him and said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Look at the other two thieves that were hanging. What did they say? Same cross. What did they say? The other one even turned to Jesus and said, now wow, we are here, you are here. On the cross. Still not taking responsibility on the cross. He was on the cross. He stole. They caught two of them. They said, this night we are going to crucify two of you. Agreed, agreed. Now they are on the cross and he's blaming Jesus. Praise God. Disobedience. Everybody lift your hand and say in the name of Jesus. The workings of disobedience leaves my life from today. See, you do not know how powerful the word of God is until your obedience is complete. Are you getting me? Our disobedience is what makes it look like God is not able to help us. Please believe what I'm saying. Number three, classic manifestation of the presence of spirits, anger, or what we call rage. Rage. Let's talk about this one moment. Anger. Everybody say anger. Please look at me. When you see someone or you have uncontrolled anger, there are people who can kill you when they are angry. Then later on say, ah, have you seen people like that? Some of our fathers especially. And I'll tell you why this anger thing is in our fathers. Because, you see, the beauty of any man's life is to make sure he's able to provide and protect his family. If you cannot provide and protect, you are not a man. doesn't matter how many children you can give birth to. You get the point? The Bible gives us what, it says any man that cannot cater, not any man that cannot give birth to children, whether male or female, that's not the issue. Protection and provision is God's biblical litmus test to test genuine manhood. You see that? Protection, provision. That's why as a father, he models that. So if your life makes him look irresponsible, he's telling you there is a problem. Because any man that cannot cater for his family, the Bible says, is worse than an infidel. Are, are you getting my point now? So, anger. When you are frustrated by trying all the principles you know to try and it's not bringing the result and there are pressures. Do you know, statistically, some of you who are medical people will agree with me, there are more men with stroke and high blood pressure. Is that true? And blood-related diseases. When there is no school fees, when there is no this, the landlord is chasing the family and all of that away and running, everybody is running. The children look at the mother because they are usually closer to the mother. The mother now looks like the father. The father is angry because he can't look at anybody now. So he looks back at them in a way that will force them to shift their face. Oh yeah, hey, what? Are you not seeing what we are doing? Frustration. That's why it's better to listen to this thing before you get married. Believe me. It's a big advantage. Big advantage. Are you following what I'm saying now? Many of us just find out, oh, I'm old. Kai, time is going. I must marry. I give myself two months. God, if you are faithful, God is saying, calm down. Just listen to this series they are teaching you. God, I'm... 
See, Bishop is enjoying his marriage through, through knowledge. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, anger. Anger. Many people have refused to be promoted regardless of their fasting and prayer because of anger. Many relationships are scattered because of anger. One day the guy just looks at the lady, removes his belt, beats the living daylight out of her. And later on said, I just wanted to, to know that I was not myself. The lady said, that's the sign that I don't have any business. Who was there? I need to know the other person. You were not yourself? That means you cannot be yourself another day. I'm not doing. You see that? Or the lady sees the guy speaking and say, Hi, sweetheart, how are you? Maybe it's his younger sister. You just carry her seat. Turn your hand and say, I will lose and you will lose. These are spirits. Let me tell you how you know it's a spirit. At the end of it, the person regrets it. And sometimes the people are even shocked. They cannot believe that they are the ones who did what they did. Hallelujah. I remember one guy years ago, the mom cursed him and she told him something. She said, you will stop stealing the day rat. Stop stealing. <laughs> true story. True story. If it's just a story I'm forming, I will tell you. Bring that guy out of the prison. In two weeks, he's going back. <laughs> they were used to him. When he comes, they say, pass, just go. They're, nobody's asking any question. Because there was a spirit. Get the gravity of disobedience. Disobedience is not just refusing to comply to instruction. There is something that forces you to violate your own values. It's called the spirit of disobedience. Hallelujah. That's what can make a man of God collect bribe. They are forming a crusade and you say, ah, this, let's give bribe. And the person forgets he's a man of God. That's what can pressure somebody to do malpractice. After praying in tongues, he said, hi, this thing is too hot, too hot. Let me just, whoever can help me, I will talk to God later on. You see, it's the workings of, please get this very seriously. I used to trivialize disobedience till the day God opened my eyes. Because I will soon teach us that you are only ready to judge all disobedience when your obedience is complete. Anger. How many of us have been suffering from anger? Anger, deep rage, anger. I remember a man who beat his son, beat his son to an extent that wires entered the boy's body. Stripped the boy naked, oh, tied him, and was just allowing these demons to vent anger. And you know, at such times, the mother cannot come. She wants to talk. Say, I will join you and this boy and tie two of you together. And show you I prayed your dowry in full. You see all these kind of statements. Say, I refuse anger. See, if this is all you need to get to finish the year, it's enough. Are you getting me? Anger. Many of us, especially ladies. Anger. Anger. You get angry at everything. Oh, it's pissing me off. It's this, this off. We have all kinds of satanic dictions that we have brought to explain this predicament. I'm telling you now, it's a spirit. Stop. You cannot be fighting with 20 people. The problem is you. If you don't humble yourself, why is it that everyone that comes around my life, we must fight? Something is wrong. Take responsibility tonight. And when it's time to pray, pray seriously. And say, enough is enough. Anger has cheated many of us. We have lost relationships. We have lost opportunities. There are many men of God that would have experienced increased thief. There are some people I would never invite to this pulpit, even if their ministry is raising the dead. Because they would transfer all kinds of wrong spirits. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are many, you see a beautiful brought a sister, lovely lady, virtuous lady, but anger. Do you know what the Bible has to say about anger? It says it's better, how did he put it in the book of Proverbs? It's better to, to sleep. How many of you have tried sleeping on a roof? I've slept on speaker and amplifier, but I've not slept on a roof. To sleep on a roof than to stay with a woman who is full of rage. 
It's a terrible thing. Look at what the Bible used to compare that kind of spirit. Hallelujah. I know a woman, I was told that, I was told, not, not that I know her, I was told the story, that she took a um, knife and put red hot fire. I tell the truth, God is my witness. And she took that thing and pressed the ears of her child. Say, you are stubborn. I will give you this mark so that forever, but did it change the child? That's what will make the child, when he becomes 13 years, his first assignment is to buy a gun. He will buy one small locally made pistol. This one that hunters use. One day when the mother talks, you say, today, one of us will die. And you see, he will kill the mother. And people will not understand the story. They'll say, such a kind woman in church, bar because she was giving. You see, the terrible thing about anger is that it does not show itself everywhere. So some people will never agree that this person is suffering from. How can you call this our elder? This loving man. When he comes up, they say such a humble man. This guy has such a character and then he will kneel down as they are even talking. But this is the man that is killing his wife at home. That's why when you go and meet the pastor and say, pastor, there is trouble. The pastor says a lie. You are just being lousy. Anger is a spirit. It's a spirit. Are you getting my point? Other spirits, lust and the rest and all of this, they stem from these three things. Fear, disobedience, anger. That's why when you are casting out devils, notice every time they manifest, the first thing is anger. They just get angry. There is no joy with Satan, brothers and sisters. No joy at all. Forget that thing that musicians try to show you that hey, it's a nice thing, hell is this, they drop, it's, it's a lie. There is no joy. He cannot have it. Praise the Lord. John 14 verse 30. Let's look at one scripture. Are you getting blessed tonight? This, this teaching is a self-examination. Many of us, you are seeing that this is, the solu this is the problem. God is already showing you that this is it. Look at me. There is no man who has the spirit of love that will not have friends around him? Please, ladies, listen to me. When you find out, see, this is, this is what is responsible for many things. I know there are other factors, but there are, the Bible says, he who wants friends must first show himself friendly. And this, this thing is a strategy. It drives your destiny helpers away from you. I'm not just talking about relationship marriage. No, destiny helpers. This spirit of anger, this spirit of fear, this disobedience has cheated a lot of us. We have carried over seasons that should be seasons of breakthrough and liberty. 1 Corinthians 4, 14 verse 30. Hallelujah. Now this is a big key. We are talking about the laws of the spirit now. Everybody say the laws of the spirit. Or say the laws of victory. Let me call them the laws of victory. We are talking of commanding victory. This is a law in the spirit. It says, I will no longer talk much with you. Can I have it in Amplified? Is it possible? Amplified. I will not talk with you much. For the prince, the evil genius, the ruler of the world is coming. And he has no what? Claim. Aha. That means for everyone Satan afflicts. He claims. There is a claim. Are you getting what Jesus is saying? This is Jesus speaking now. He said, and he has no claim on me. He has nothing in common with me. There is nothing in me that belongs to him. Therefore, he has no power. This is a big key. Please, I want to show you laws of victory right now. That means every time Satan looks at you, he's finding something that looks at, like him in you. And if he finds it, it gives him access. Are you getting what I'm saying now? When, when demons oppress people, it's not to say the word of the Lord is not powerful. There must be something. And we're going to explore this. Say after me, the loss of victory. There must be something. And is that something we want to... There are three things. Three things that give Satan access, legal access over people. Number one, covenants. Please write it. Covenants. Are you getting blessed tonight? 
See, many of you, as you are hearing what I'm saying, I tell you, you will just be getting free at once. Because when you hear the word, the word is sent. It can heal and it can deliver. Say after me, covenant. Now, the word covenant is very important. Just leave that verse. Covenant is a very important word. I know we have bastardized it in the body of Christ. We just shout covenant, covenant. Let me tell you what a covenant is. A covenant is an agreement. What did I call it? An agreement. A pact, a contract. Huh? Between two or more people. Based on clearly defined terms. A covenant, an agreement between two or more people. Whether one is higher than the other, that's not the issue. Are you getting me? Based on what? Clearly defined terms. Notice my definition. An agreement between two or more people. You can't enter a covenant with yourself. Clearly defined terms with grave consequences when there is any violation. This is a standard definition. Notice the word agreement. Notice the word what? Clearly defined terms. Notice the word consequences when it is violated. If you understand this, you will see the reason. Please look at me. While certain geographical territories in Nigeria still have certain strongholds. Everybody says strongholds. There are places in this country that the men are generally irresponsible. Geographically speaking, true or false. You may have been exempted by light, but it does not stop the fact that that's... Are you getting me? Where I come from, the people drink. They drink a lot. Are you getting me? I know... Remember one time we went for crusade that they told us we went for crusade in a certain place and they said when they give birth to the baby, they dip alcohol and just touch it in his mouth small. And the guy gets up a drunkard all his life. He can go to Harvard and return back to Nigeria as a drunkard. Listen, I want you to understand covenants. So, watch this. Our forefathers, because when you understand the history of the continent of Africa, I hope you know that traditional religion was before the coming of Christianity. Do you agree with me? Praise God. May I announce to you that every tribe, every tongue, every nation in Nigeria was and is still involved in some level of witchcraft. Say amen. So the issue of saying, you, you are from this place. Your people eat people as if you are innocent. Everybody's forefather was an idol worshiper of some sort. I said the last time, it's just that others were more dedicated than others. Others were less as fair, but they were still involved. They were still involved. Are you getting this now? So that you have no right to point fingers at anybody. Say you are coming from this state, you are coming from this. We hear that your people do this. You're... No, you don't have that right. That authority is not given to you. Because everybody was an idol worshiper of some sort. Are you getting my point? Abraham was an idol worshiper when God called him. What could he have worshipped? Only idols. And when God called him, Jake, all of the people, the, as from Abraham, that was when they started understanding the person called Jehovah. Are you getting me now? He revealed himself to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and they continued with that revelation until the word became flesh. Praise God. Now, what does that mean? That tells you that our forefathers went to the gods that they only knew. And they, on our, see, in the village, they understand covenant very well. Are you getting my point? They go and meet these strange spirits through mediums, through priests. Is that true? And they say, okay, protect our land from war. It started during war. Because from Bible days till today, they've been fighting. People have always been fighting. So because of fear, the kings and elder statesmen went on behalf of territories. Are you getting me now? None of us here is from America. So you cannot pretend not to understand what I'm saying. Are you getting my point? Don't give me that face as if me, I was born. You were born in a plane, no problem. But when I finish this explanation, you will know 
that you must stay and deal with certain things and conquer it. Nazareth, where Jesus came, had a spirit that was manifesting. Nothing good comes out from there. Nathaniel testified that can anything good come out of Nazareth? Jesus had to exempt himself. Are you, are you getting my point? Are you getting blessed? Hmm. So, they went to these gods to seek protection, to seek prosperity, to seek fruitfulness. And all of this, this is what Satan wants. Satan always wants you to come to him. Declare your loyalty and then he will give you. See, that a man is rich does not mean it's God that gave the money. Satan makes people rich. Are you hearing me? Satan, Satan took Jesus to a mountain. He said, look at all of, he showed him the glory of the world in a span of time. He said, I will give you if you bow down. All Satan wants is the bowing down part. And our elders carried their heads on our behalf. We were in their loins. We all bowed our heads to these devils and idols. And they said, we agree. Protect our children's children. Because that's all they knew. Don't get angry at our fathers. To them, they felt it was the best thing they were doing. Are you getting my point? That's why when they came for war, you won't see barricade, but you enter a city. People will start slapping you till you go out. The protection, the altars were speaking. You get the point? You see a man moving. Nobody's protecting him. You try to touch him. Somebody somewhere because the covenant speaks. Are you getting my point? Ratified by blood. And it is renewed periodically. Usually annually. People go and that's the whole idea of many of what we call traditional festivals. It doesn't matter if they call a pastor to say opening prayer. No. That's not the whole idea is a, what do I call it now? A, a revisiting of these altars. Please get this thing. We're talking of the laws of victory. You must understand this story. Now down the line, many of our parents left the village and they came to, they had the privilege to go and study in universities. They went abroad, you know, they did a lot of things and the missionaries came. That's why when the missionaries came to Nigeria, they brought the gospel, but they died. The demon said, you are coming to save people. Now, they knew that Jesus was Lord, but many of them did not understand the principles of the kingdom. As soon as they entered the land, they said, you want to stop this and that and that. The next thing, malaria just caught the man. They sent drugs from America, from everywhere, the man still died. And the priest who is responsible will just come out. Do you know how people in the village live old? 101, 114, no glasses. Ha ha, I remember you. He said, die now, die. The man won't die. In other words, I'm alive, I'm watching. Listen. You keep becoming an inconvenience to generations. Everybody must send you money. You started the trouble. The children grew, married, had their children. All kinds of things go on in the village. And the reason for all of this, listen. The reason for all of this is, I shared it the last time, transgenerational allegiance. Are you getting me? This is what Satan wants. What did I call it? Transgenerational allegiance. Where one generation will now say, we are the young people now we are bowing to you and you buy into that generation so before a child is giving birth to they are already covenanted to all kinds of spirits you you just get up and come and meet somebody i like this girl oh pray you won't pray be born again you won't be born again you just come the day you say i like her in the night you just see somebody you say be careful the day you ever come near that lady She's my wife or she's this. And you wake up in the morning, you say, ah. Oh God, I won't do again, no. The kind of warning. Listen, many people think this thing is not real. Let me tell you this night. Except you are pretending. This is what has happened to many people here. You know, the church is a place of apathy. We, 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 we allow suits like this to just make us lie over things. But tonight we are addressing issues. Some of you are going home after next week. 
This is the revelation you must take with this understanding. Some of you will be angry after today. And you say, so this is the mystery behind this lack of marriage in our family. Behind this, there are, there are cities that have what we call the cause of poverty. A professor will finish, retire, and go back to his village and be riding a bicycle. That's the covenant for, for violating this thing. There are many people like that. You see somebody who just leave London and say, I'm going back home. I, I like the village. Oh God, what are you looking for? Village that is room, 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 like shop. I like it. I'm still staying there. The person stays there until he dies. Education does not cast out demons. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Cologne and sure and smelling nice does not cast out demons. Good English does not cast out demons. I wish it did. Would have had less demons in our generation but they are still here. There is power in the name of Jesus there is power in the name of Jesus there is power in the name of Jesus tonight it will break every chain break every chain break every chain it will break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Sing one more time with revelation from your heart. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. Break every chain, it will break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Let's just sing it one more time. There's power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. Satan comes to find expression. There must be something that he can hold on to. Number one is a covenant. Hear me. Listen. A possibility exists that you can become a victim of a covenant although you were not there when it was enacted. Were you there when Jesus died? Did you see him on the cross? And even if you go to Jerusalem and cry in front of a cross, you didn't see him. But by covenant, he brought you into it. And it's as real as standing there. To an extent that Paul can say, I have been crucified. Don't lie to us, Paul. Where were you? This is the power of a covenant. Footballers score and they say, we scored. Were you there? You understand covenant. So, here, here's how the Bible puts it. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That means somebody can say, as for me and my house, we will serve this shrine. Is that true? Did they call everybody one by one to say, Benga, are you interested? He said, no. Lillian, are you interested? Somebody went on behalf of a nation and entered a covenant. This is the predicament of the nation of Africa. And the kind of gospels we are inheriting from America will not deliver us. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm not criticizing them. We salute them, but there's got to be more. This is Africa. A nation that God, a continent that God desires. The whole eyes of hell is upon Africa. They know, they know that saviors shall arise. This is the mountain. 
that's why there's multiplied mysterious sicknesses and the rest i will show you listen i'm going to show you certain revelations and you will see why some sicknesses cannot be cured medically no matter how you try because they were not sicknesses in the first place hallelujah praise the lord is somebody getting angry tonight so satan must be free of whatever he can lay claim of in your life say covenant some of our parents let's be honest even went to an extent of inviting one baba tell the truth is that true some of you were small you just saw somebody just come they say please give him a seat say all right everybody come the next thing you saw something boiling no fire ah who are you say just sit down turn your back or remove your clothes this one for husband this one for prosperity this one for that listen listen brothers and sisters i want to i can kneel down and beg you in the name of jesus christ don't you tell me that because you just said i give my life to jesus christ everything went that is a lie from the pit of hell are you getting me and i'm going to explain to you that does not mean the bible is, tells a lie when it says you are a new creation in christ i've taught you the structure of god's way of communicating he speaks as though you have reached the end it's not his fault it's the way his nature is he does not speak as if he's bounded by time when he looked at gideon he said oh mighty man of value how long did it take until he conquered before he walked in that experience i'm not denying that the word of god says this about you but brothers and sisters it will take the experiential application of kingdom truths Otherwise, you will see it in the world, but you may never get it. Please, are you getting what I'm saying? I saw certain things at work in my father that I always wondered. I was always fighting with my father growing up. That's how some of you are. You just see that. What is this resentment between your parents and you? It's almost as if you are rivals. You cannot explain. There is a story you do not know. This is what I'm explaining to you is a cry from altars a man marries a wife one day he gets up and just looks at her and everything about her irritates him everything irritates him they go to counselors and they say are you looking hot you to help yourself now she says okay oh, go and buy the clothes the day she's wearing the man looks as if he didn't see anything <laughs> you did this for me don't be stupid because these things are spiritual things some of us here, this is God answering your question right now. You, every time something good is about to come to your life, you say, okay, daddy, help me. There is a small competition. You find out that that spirit rises again. That's the day your father comes back angry. And he says, where, where did you say you are going? Lagos for where? You are not going anywhere. Some of you, it was when you started coming for koinonia that the war in your family started. You were minding your business for as long as you were not serving God, you were not serving, doing anything. You, one kind of resentment you cannot explain, brothers and sisters. When the Bible says kingdom shall rise against kingdom, your question should be which kingdom? There are kingdoms, there are thrones, there are dominions. They still speak. Are you getting what I'm saying? Do you know why they are speaking? You have violated the terms of that covenant. Because according to the covenant, the fraternity continues. Now, based on the knowledge of the gospel, all right? That you have had. You are now saying I'm not bowing down to anything. Your parents told you we are not going to any village. We are not doing anything again. These altars as far as they are concerned. They have been destined to come and protect your family. Now they come and you are saying Jesus Christ is going to protect my family. They say okay we will see. So their goal is to frustrate whatever is not them. So that you will return. You see it. That's why when things get bad. They say this one that this leg is swelling up. You where did you go sir? You say I was sitting down. They say, oh yeah, go home. <laughs> when you go home, the elder laughs. He gives you a word of knowledge as you are entering. He says, I knew you would come. What is he saying? I knew you would come. And when you come, he says, why are you pretending as if you were not born here? You went to London and it washed away what we are, your fathers have been doing. And you too, you will kneel down and say, Kai, I'm suffering this contract. Let me just do it. Do you know what? Satan hits you at your greatest point of desperation because at that point you can do anything. He won't disturb you until you get to 30 years. And then you say, are you really ready to marry? 
And some of our mothers will say, see, oh, let me tell you the truth. There's one story. I didn't tell you because you were very young. Just go to the village and marry in peace. Many pastors come and think that it's your color that drives demons. I must marry this girl. She said, I have a bad history. I must still marry you. And the demons say, marry. Are you ready to take this? Yes, please. Hurry up. You just marry and you marry something else. The ministry dies. Everything dies. The woman is not bad, but a covenant is speaking. The Bible says, blotting out every handwriting. Who wrote it? When? Where did, what did they use to write the handwriting? And the Bible says, ordinance that spoke against us. There are ordinances that speak against people. I saw certain traits in my father. I hated it. But as I grew, I started finding it manifest in me. And I seemed to be helpless about it. When I caught this revelation, I flogged it out with destiny. You know that song, I'll never let you go. It's not the song. It's what he said before the song I want to quote. He says, there comes a time. That's not what I'm saying. You think I cannot sing it? He says, there comes a time. Is that not what he said? In a man's life, when you have to do what? Just like Jacob and say, I won't let you go. This must be this your night. Don't celebrate Christmas the way you have been doing. There is no reason to celebrate when you have not dealt with what Jesus Christ came to solve. Many of us pamper Satan in our lives. You are not angry enough. I promise you, if you treat Satan as a gentleman, you will die like a chicken. Are you getting what I'm saying? There is, the Bible says, woe to them who are at ease in Zion. You must get angry and say, enough. The day my younger sister was going to write exam years ago, she collapsed in the exam hall. <sighs> what happened? Nothing. Brothers and sisters, covenants are powerful. Are you getting what I'm saying? Many of you, when you were not in Christ, you entered different kinds of covenants. I want to say something that will surprise you and I apologize. I'm not a law and a religious person, but I just need to put this because I'm talking about covenant. Hallelujah. Look at me. I want to tell you something that will surprise you. Do you know sex is a covenant? Look at me, please. Huh? Like I said, I'm not reminding you of your past or anything. No, I'm just bringing it to help you understand. Everybody say soul tie. Say it, say soul tie. Listen. It's not about sex, sleeping with somebody. That's not what Satan is after. There is a law in the spirit that whoever you sleep with, you are one in the spirit. You become one with that person. Are you getting me? I know Nigerian films paint it very nice. They just show a romantic lady coming with her chest open and one guy like a sheep to the slaughter coming. But let me tell you the word of God right now, this night. That Christianity that you say, oh, I will serve God, but forget God is, let me tell you, sex is a covenant. Are you getting my point? And the trouble is, many of us, because of certain things, maybe our past lives or whatever it is, we got involved in all kinds of things. And then when we got born again, we just said, okay, everything is over. This is the reason why you will see a bishop who once was sleeping around or doing something. Are you following me now? Or a pastor. Or a, he was in the world drinking and smoking and he just comes and he says he's born again. When the guy says he's born again, he's standing and he's preaching and one day that altar strikes. Bam! And the person gets up. He's still a man of God. Though. The next thing, he's scouting around for ladies. This is what? This is the predicament many of our brothers and sisters in Christ are going through. Hallelujah. Covenants. Number two. What gives Satan access? We have to hurry up. Thank you, Jesus. Have you gotten it? When, see, look at me. 
I'm one person who hates putting a law on people. When you impose laws on people, you make them religious. Give them the revelation behind it and they will comply accordingly. This is the mistake many parents are making. The moment the son gets to 13 years, they say, Samuel, come. They say, the day, hold your ears. The day I see any lady around you, that day, you will know I gave birth to you. And the guy said, what kind of embarrassment? You know, he's a teenager. He's feeling like he's a big boy. Ladies like him. See his mother falling his hand and embarrassing him. Hallelujah. And then they now preach. Don't sleep around. Don't smoke. So the person say, why? And they're not listening. Why? Because those who smoke, there is a name they give them. They are the big boys in the campuses. Why are you telling me not to smoke? Why are you telling me not to sleep around? If you explain the spiritual revelation, it will threaten you to obedience. You see it? If I ask you, sit down on this chair and remain there, after a while you will be wary. I didn't tell you why you sat down. But if I tell you there is a lion outside, you are free to go. But this is the best position. Will you see it? Even if the seat is pinching you, will you stand up? Because now I've given you a revelation to sponsor your patience. This is the religious thing we do in church. We come and meet people. Don't do this as if they wanted to do it. You are seeing a lady jumping from man to man and she's crying. She came to you for counseling. Say, man of God. I've been sleeping with everybody. You, you now join and slept with her again. And she went to another person. This is what a lot of people do because it's not an issue of psychology. This is an issue of spirits. Oh, let's pray. Father, I now release you in the name of Jesus. Go and prosper. And the demon say, let's go. <laughs> because it's not by grammar through the greatness of thy power not your vocal composition through the greatness of your power you are going home listen god is sending many of us as saviors you are going back angry every time god wants to liberate a home a family he seeks for a man an agent an ambassador i know that there are some of you who are already doing it this thing is all, many of you right now, you are responsible. Do you know your prayer life is already, you are feeling the freedom already in the air in your family. It's just for some things to come in. And can I tell you, when it breaks, it has broken forever. For sure. This is the balance with deliverance. Many people make it look as if you should be in bondage when you are free. No, 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 no. When you are set free. For he who the son of man sets free is free indeed. But until then, you are in bondage indeed. Hallelujah. Goodness. Let's rush. So I've told you that, okay, covenant number two, yokes. Many of us don't know what a yoke is. A yoke is a self-imposed predicament. Self-imposed predicament by fraternizing with Satan. Personal self imposed. Why self imposed? Don't touch this. You say, I must touch it and see what will happen. You touch it and your hand refuses to leave it. Yokes. Some of us, our stubbornness is what is responsible. The yokes on our lives are taller than us. The way we are standing like this. You are just standing alone. But the yokes that are on us because we are stubborn and rebellious to the ways of God. But tonight the Lord brings liberty. Hallelujah. Liberty. Liberty. Yokes. Hallelujah. Number three. Associations. Now, I know this one looks like a cool one. Wait till I finish explaining it. Associations. Look at me. Have you read the scripture that says what fellowship? Everybody say fellowship. Say koinonia. It didn't say what visitation. 
Are you getting me? So I'm not saying you, you will walk with unbelievers. The Bible did not say what visitation. It says what fellowship, conscious fraternity with wrong people. Let me tell you something. People carry spirits and they carry presence. Jonah entered the boat. People, their whole life damaged. He came with something else. The ark came into the house of Obed-Edom. And within that small time, Jacob came in with a blessing from his father. And he caused Laban to prosper. Personalities have spiritual implications. Don't let anybody just come and hop in and out of your house in the name of solidarity with your village people. Send them away if they are not ready to listen to the principles of the kingdom. Because when Rachel went, she carried her gods. That's what the Bible tells us. When Rachel went, she carried her gods. Jacob, the husband, but Rachel carried her small gods. Everybody say associations. The Bible says what fellowship has light got to do with darkness and what communion, two words, same words, koinonia, what communion has light got to do with darkness? It says come out from among them and be ye separate and touch not the unclean thing. Now, many of you, look at me, many of you have inherited all kinds of demonic things because of wrong and careless associations and you say it does not matter. You have friends that all they watch is pornography. You go to their, their houses, they are watching hardcore pornography. But because of your solidarity to them. Are you seeing? Your solidarity. I don't want them to call me holy, holy. I don't want them to call me this. And you get there. You can't watch those kinds of things and still be yourself. Because those things are transference of spirits. Are you getting me? You have a mind, you have a brain, it has memories, it can replay, it can fast forward. So you go and watch all kinds of junks. And you come back and you are wondering why every time you see every lady, you are feeling like sleeping with them. Something is wrong. And you come for koinonia like this, the water of the world washes you. And you get up and go back. There are many of us, we, we entered wrong relationships because of our friends. They came together and said, you said, don't fall our hand. This guy has been disturbing us. Let me tell you, straight to the point. If you are not bold to make a stand for Jesus Christ, you may not arrive at your destination. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Tonight's teaching may be hard, but let me tell you, God is speaking to us here. Break free from, from wrong associations. Love is a command. Association is not. It's not a commandment. Some of you still have bad friends. Terrible associations. You have, a, you have somebody who came to your room. Listen to me. And the guy said, sorry, oh, I don't have accommodation. Let me stay in your room. He's staying in your room. You come back in the evening and you see that a lady, he brought a lady in your room. And he just laughed. He said, bros, bros, go and take fresh air. Now I beg. And you are laughing. I say, guy, you serve now. Wow, yeah, yeah, I'll come back after one hour. You see that associations creating an atmosphere. I preached a message years ago called the law of atmosphere. Beans cannot grow on this carpet, true or false. You can't just throw beans and expect it to grow like that because the atmosphere is not conducive. Let me tell you the truth. There are many of us that need to go and destroy things that we are associating ourselves with. He told Gideon. Go and destroy those things. There are, there are some of us, I've said it, our parents are born again, but there's one demonic bow and arrow or one kind of thing. It was, I'm not saying everything is bad, but some things were dedicated. You know it. You carry it and keep it there. Am I blessing you? I love you too much not to tell you the truth. Because this is what is responsible for the downfall of many families. Hallelujah. Families, listen. Those of us who are parents here, listen. Please let us help our children. Some of, some families, even as, see, this is not the thing of young people. There are families that are associating with wrong people. 
They are the ones that carry your father and mother to one so-called prophet and they did every kind of satanic thing. Your parents were working fine until some wrong associations took them to somebody. They didn't tell you. They went and they entered the covenant on your behalf. Associations. You must get out of it. Get out of it quick. Many of us who like joining clubs, Rotary Club is nice, but others that don't have names, I-40, you say, I'm joining too. What do you know it is? They say, when we join, you come and touch the table three times and you go. You too, you now carry your big head. You go and touch it three times. You see, let me tell you, don't, the Bible says, do not be unaware, ignorant of the devil's devices. Is the word stratomai, his methodology. In the name of association, Many of us have joined every kind of satanic sites online. I'm a member. I'm a this. I'm a that. They send you one envelope something. They say, okay, put the anchor chief here. Many of us, is associations that have made us go and collect all kinds of things. Love portion. I hear they do it in Zaria City. When you rub it, it will make the, the guy. What if the guy is now more powerful than you? You don't know that he must have a repercussion. This is what you don't know. There's no free lunch with Satan. You will first eat. When you finish, she will tell you the bill. And you must pay. You must pay. So, when you say they gave me this, to make this guy, ladies, hear me. Anything God cannot do for you, let it not be done. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Husband can come from marine spirits. Hear me. Children can come from marine spirits. A lot of people, a lot of people are in error and derision. Gentlemen, look at me. Let me tell you something. If your quest for money makes you to join all kinds of demonic associations, it will take you to hell. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are many clubs right now that are helping people to get money fast. When advent of, of everybody being a big boy, billionaire 23, millionaire 21, you too, you call me too, I must be before 28. Nothing is wrong with that except for the fact that when the quest for money becomes a desperate thing, they take you everywhere. They ask one wealthy man, they say, what is the secret of your prosperity? And he said something very scary. He didn't say, I read good business books. He said, I was in a certain place at a certain time. And in that certain place, there were other people like me. But I was the one who took the step they did not take. He said, that's the secret to his wealth. Will you follow that kind of person? What kind of scary description is that? You were at a certain place at a certain time. The fact that other people didn't join should tell you whatever they say they should do is scary. Sadiq Ibrahim, remember the gentleman that came here? They made him to sleep on a grave for three days. How many days? How many days? Many of us are willing to do it. He said three days is not better than 12 years. Do it. Do it. I remember Papa Akwami, they did. You remember one video we watched some years ago of one guy, one worry guy that used to be an armed robber. Eight years robbing people, nobody catches him. He won't run after when you are chasing him. You will just not see him. And what will happen to you will serve as a lesson. The next day you see him, you will leave him quietly. They can enter the bank. I mean it. They can. They don't rob 10,000, uh -uh, 10 million, 5 million, 100 million. And this guy himself, the covenant is see, There are many people, wealthy people who are under all kinds of covenants. Part of the agreement is you don't help your family members or you don't help yourself. They are your uncles. That's why you can be dying and they won't help you. They are not greedy. They are under oath. Are you getting me? That's why the Bible says the blessing of the Lord. It make it rich. You see the sorrow part? That's what Satan cannot remove from your life. Mysterious livings. Your father just comes and says, all right, I'm going to have a personal room right now. Your mother says, after how many years? He said, you had me. Go and find another room. And the guy stays alone. 
You wake up in the night, you see him standing like this. Ah, daddy, what is this? He said, go out, go out, lock the door. This man is sweating for hours. Why? He said he must walk. This destiny must move forward. Be careful. What you call moving forward may be the biggest retrogression in your life. Whatever God does not give me, let me not get it. I won't get anything in this life. I prophesy into your life. May you not get anything in this life that will take you to hell. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I am saying this because, Steve, right now, people are under pressure to prove to others they are successful. Every young man graduates and he wants to show that within one year, I bought a car, I bought this, and people are entering every kind of wrong, it's first associations that lead people into this thing. And they go and join some groups. They see a young man and say, you, how did you do it now? Now, how this one that you're... To an extent that many of our pastor people are already following it now. Are you seeing that? Because the price for laboring genuinely to get the true prosperity, the seasons of proving is very difficult and almost unbearable. So many people will prefer the shortcut and that's Satan's ministry to give you shortcut. Bow. You don't need to go to the cross. Just bow and take it now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Mark 3.27. Let's hurry up. My spirit is fired up oh, as I'm speaking because I know that this is what is responsible for the pain of many families. Many, many, many. This is the puzzle. Are you ready now? I want to share with you a powerful scripture. Everybody look up. How do you get out of these things? How do you get out of, how do you walk in the experiential victory? Number one, the Bible gives us another law. It says, no man can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man and then after he will plunder his house. So in every house there is a strong man. And the Bible says you cannot, the, the, the barrier between you and the things you want to take is the presence of a strong man. The word strong there does not just, it means strong to the degree that your lack of knowledge permits him. Are you getting my point? You must get this key. I'm about to release a powerful key and we'll pray. It says you must first do what? Bind the strong man. Bind the strong man. Bind the strong man. How do you bind the strong man? I will tell you. You don't bind the strong man by saying, strong man, I bind you. No. You bind the strong man through knowledge. Everybody say through knowledge. Everybody say through knowledge. You bind the strong man through knowledge. And the application of that knowledge. First, before any prophetic utterance. Matthew chapter 16 verse 19. One of the, mis the most misunderstood scriptures in the Bible. Matthew Please, let's look at it quickly. Matthew 16, 19. Everybody read. It's projected. One to read. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Stop. So, before we talk about binding and losing, what do we talk about first? Keys. Replace the word keys with principles. Ready? One to read. And I will give you the principles of the kingdom. It is by the application of those principles you bind and lose. Are you getting what I'm saying? There is what you must do that binds Satan. There is what you must do that loses your blessings. Many people just say, I bind, I bind, I lose. There is a place for prophetic communication. But before you talk of any prophetic communication, there must be a revelation knowledge hallelujah very important these keys are the keys of knowledge i will give you the principles this is what i'm sharing with you principles when you know these things you can keep satan where he belongs as a ministry we know some principles and our success is not in, it's not magic you can be prosperous by knowing these principles. And your confidence will not be the prosperity, the, but the principles you know. 
because there are principles that will be applied again and again. If you get blessed without knowing why you got blessed and how the blessing came, you will be afraid to lose it. This is why many people are not givers because they are not sure it will come again. Revelation makes you a giver. And I will give you the principles of the kingdom. And whatever you bind shall be bound. Whatever you lose shall be loosed. Everybody say revelation. Everybody say it again, revelation. This is what we lack. Revelation. What are the principles? For instance, look at me. I want to tell you some principles very quickly. Every time you find out that every door around you is being closed. You are neglecting the law of honor. Which is the principle for access. Are you seeing that? Honor is the key for access. When you dishonor people, there are doors closed towards you. Honor. Everybody say honor. If you want to receive the blessing of a father or a mother, what happens? honor and they will bless you so he told his song he said go and bring me venison so that i'll be pleased and i will bless you are you getting my point another principle the principle of open heaven is tithing it's in your bible tithing is not the key for money i've said this thing again and again tithing is not the law for money tithing does more than money Tithing is the scriptural principle for open heavens. So that whatever is done under that open heaven prospers. It is when you are a faithful tither, then this scripture becomes real. Whatsoever he doeth prospers. Because you are now, if you give under a closed heaven, you are wasting your time. Are you getting me? There are many faithful givers who are not tithers. God is not just after money. God is after a pattern. He told Moses, he said, ensure that you build according to pattern. Open heavens. As a ministry, by the grace of God, we do not owe God one naira in tithe. We have been faithful to the latter. I told the finance department, it doesn't matter what collection we are collecting for what. God's 10% goes not forcefully, cheerfully out of revelation. And you will live as if Satan does not exist. Hallelujah. Honor brings you access. I shared with you my story. How that God instructed me to go to Canaan land. I've shared the story. And I carried a seed and I went to Canaan land. Hallelujah. They were here. I remember, I remember that time. I told them. I woke up in the morning. To go and ease myself and the Lord told me immediately you are going without question without arguing many of us see delayed obedience is disobedience in a measure he said Abraham rose up early in the morning and when I rose up I went there I went to go and sow my seed honor gives access and when that happens I came out and I was going to enter the car for the driver to take me back to the airport let me return and the Lord told me, come out of the car. He said, kneel down on this ground. I knelt down and I laid my hands. And he said, from today, from today, the city is open up to you. So somebody will be seeing our messages going around. You do not know that there are keys. You see that? That's why when you criticize a man who is blessed of God, whether you are right or wrong, God will first punish you before addressing the issue. Please, are you learning something? Prayer and fasting. Listen. Prayer and fasting is the key for a vibrant, anointed spiritual life. There is, there is the place of the word. But let me tell you, prayer, there are many lazy believers around who have explained away prayer and fasting because it's hard. They just kick it away. And they expect you will never forget about spiritual power if you are not committed to prayer and fasting. Except you want to go and do what a lot of people are doing. But I tell you, you want authentic power? Prayer and fasting. I told you prayer and fasting 
I know we say it solves many problems. But from my Bible, prayer and so fasting only solves one problem. Unbelief. It exposes the atmosphere of your spirit. And helps you to comprehend the reality of the person of God. In a way that you can believe him more truly. Are you seeing that? So these are many principles. Many principles. Many. There are many more. Praise. Is one of the dramatic principles for the instant intervention of God. You know what? This praise that many people trivialize. Is it just dancing? Da no. Praise is a mighty tool for biblical spiritual warfare. Read your Bible. It was at the shout, the healer. All the instruments and the voices and the walls of Jericho. They didn't just fall down. They sank. Praise. Are you getting it now? Very powerful spiritual principle. Tonight, the Lord is going to set many people free. And many of us in turn will carry an anointing through this revelation and go back and set a lot of people free. Next year, hopefully, we will still talk about certain things. Very quickly, let me just share this. There are three revelations you must have to be free from all of these things. Three revelations. Number one, you must have a revelation of the finished work of Christ. You must, is compulsory. You must realize that you are only establishing something whose victory has been declared. Everybody say the finished work of Christ. Say it, the finished work of Christ. Because I must balance the part that I've been telling you now, a lot of us have been trained to understand as if let's just fight and see who will win. Uh -uh. Your fight is a fight of faith. And the fight of faith is taking the arsenals of the kingdom and enforcing the victory. Are you getting me? Say after me, Jesus died and conquered Satan. Conquered principalities. Conquered powers. And he has given me the victory. Oh, hallelujah. The Bible says we are seated with Christ. Please believe this. You are seated with Christ. You must function from that platform. Are you getting me? You must function from that realm of truth. Although you are sick, you must believe that you are seated with Christ. The devil will say, if you are really seated with Christ, why has it not happened? You are going to apply the kingdom principles now and it will get him out. But it does not negate the fact that you are seated. Say, I'm seated with Christ. Far above. Say, he has given me a name. I am a partaker of his anointing, of his spirit, of his authority. He said, all power, all authority has been given to me. And he said, as the father sent me with the same equipping, so send I you. I, I had a revelation. I had an understanding that brought me victory. He's saying, I send you with it. Go and do exploits with it. So number one, you must have a revelation of the finished work of Christ. Number two, you must be diligent to apply the principles that cause the manifestation of whatever promise in scripture. You get the point? You must be diligent to apply. Every blessing in scripture has principles. It has your part that you will play. So it's not enough to say I've been seated with Christ. You must apply the principles. For you are only ready to judge disobedience when your obedience is complete. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 6. Just write it. We're out of time. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 6. You are only ready to judge disobedience when your obedience is complete. When Satan cannot find anything of himself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The final thing is to realize. Please realize. 
that God is with you. I know this looks like a very simple statement. But I wish it was that simple. Moses understood. He said, do not send us from here if your presence. They just came out from Egypt. And he knew that these gods will come after them until the presence of God drives them away. In your presence, that's where I am strong. In your presence, oh Lord, my God. In your presence, that's where I belong. I am seeking your faith. And touching your grace in the cleft of the rock in your presence, oh God, in your presence, oh God. Many of us will be delivered tonight once and for all. We cannot end this meeting. See. Even if you have to go and set your family members free, you cannot set others free by being like them. You must first experience the liberty of the spirit. This is a very serious moment. Hallelujah. Blotting out every handwriting and every ordinance. Please rise up on your feet. Give this moment every seriousness. Give this moment every seriousness. I won't go back, I can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed. Please sing this song from the depth of your heart. I won't go back. Say, Lord, I'm not going back the way I came to the way it used to be before your presence. More time. I will go back. I will go back and go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed. One more time. I will go back. I will go back and go back to the way it used to be before your presence. Hallelujah. Tonight's deliverance will be in this order. Number one, we are going to pray in tongues for five minutes. Hallelujah. Let the devil know you mean business tonight. Instrumentalists, you walk with me. Hallelujah. After you pray in tongues, we are going to pray. The devil that will not let you go this night has not yet come into existence. Are you hearing me? You will shake off these shackles once and for all. Are you ready now? Go ahead and pray. Instrumentalists, go ahead. Please pray. This is the last teaching service for the year. You cannot. You can't go back the way you came. So go to Pekete, pray on behalf of yourself, on behalf of your loved ones. There's victory here tonight at a platter of gold. Enough is enough. Shackles of poverty, shackles of failure. Pray, pray in tongues. Just pray in tongues. Pray in tongues. Tonight is your night of deliverance. Tonight is your night of victory. Your long awaited victory is here at last. Here at last. In this last teaching service of the year, 
Do it for the sake of your generation. Do it for the sake of your children. Do it. Pray. Let the yoke be broken. Let the yoke be broken. Do it for the sake of your children. The children shall not suffer the iniquity of the parents. Don't say it does not concern me. Be humble enough tonight. Don't say it does not concern me. Don't say it does not concern me. Be the savior that will arise from Zion. Rescue the perishing. Be that agent of change tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I told the Lord, I said, Lord, I don't just want to teach this. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Hear me, brothers and sisters. This is the explanation to many mystical things that are happening in our families. This is the explanation. There is a devil out there. And tonight, if you will only stand, you will be that savior. Please tonight, if it's for the sake of your loved ones, say, Lord, so this is why you brought me. I will pay any price to get out of it. Sister, this is the mystery behind your late marriage. This is the mystery behind the barrenness. This is the mystery behind untold hardships. Many families are going through untold hardships. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now you're going to pray in one or two minutes. See, let me tell you, the way some of you are praying, let me tell you straight to the point, you are not serious. Are you hearing me? I'm not saying pray till you shout the roof, but some of us are just standing and strolling around. We are not playing games here, believe me. This is for the sake of your destiny. We are here to help you. But like a hospital, no matter how we try to help you, you must cooperate. Me, I'm angry. Oh. I've been praying this. Are you getting me? You must experience this liberty. Some of you have been trusting God for job since you graduated. All you think is that hard? Let the devil live and see if the door will not open. Listen, hold on. Hold on. Oh, there's power in the name of Jesus. See, listen. You're going to pray. Right now, before I pray for you, see. Look up. The Bible says, He that conceals his sin shall not prosper. I'm not just talking. There are things you know are happening in your life and your family. I'm not doubting the fact that you're a man of God. Are you hearing me? You are going to pray. Are you getting me? There are some of us is lost. There are some of us, whatever it is, you know that some of us is the cause of poverty. It's on our families and it's on everybody went to school. But they are living as if nobody has seen the four walls of a university. Let me tell you. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters. If this is all we do tonight and you receive your liberty, this is pre-miracle service. Are you getting me? I'm just doing my job to help you here tonight. But brothers, I want you to pray. Are you listening to me? In the next five minutes... You are going to mention those limitations in your family and say, Lord, tonight, this night, right now, lift your voice and pray. Lord, the wickedness in my family must stop. Pray it. 
Lord, the hatred in my family must stop. The unfaithfulness in my family must stop. Pray it. The unfruitfulness. Please pray. Whatever makes doors to close when it gets to my door, it must stop tonight. Doors of marital delay, they must be opened. Pray. Whatever is responsible for my ministry not flourishing, pray. 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 Ministry is not that hard. If you are struggling, something is wrong. Pray. For your finances, pray. Please pray. Mothers pray. Fathers pray. Pray. Kakoto preketetetete. Ekroto sho pregere balaraba. Rakatatata. Rekoto prekete. Forget about your neighbor. Forget about your neighbor. This is business tonight. Confront gates. Confront gates. Confront gates. Lekoto prekete. Ekreto shekete. It shall come to pass. The body shall be taken from off thy shoulder and the yoke from off thy neck. It shall be destroyed because of the anointing. The yoke can be broken. The covenant can be broken. The cause can be broken. Jesus paid the price already. Our job is to enforce it. Shakata tata tata, rekoto prekete, ekrotos kopari araba, rekoto prekete. For the sake of your destiny, for the sake of your children, break some circles, break some circles. Enough is enough. Break some circles. Break every chain, break every chain. To break every chain, break every chain. To break every chain. To break every chain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I like you to pray. Every covenant or every ordinance, Lord, that is speaking over my life, whether I know it or not, every covenant that has come tonight, I confront it willingly, consciously. Lift your voice. I break it. Every covenant, every spell, every enchantment. Pray. A brocotto brecate, le brocotto prosa, a brocotto brecate, every covenant. Oh God, Jesus died already. I break it from my life. Shekete Rocotto brecate, I break it, oh God. I break it in the name of Jesus. I break it. Every covenant that brings loss, that brings failure, that brings hardship, that brings delay, I break it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I like the spirit in this place. Hallelujah. One more prayer point before I minister to us. One more prayer point. You're going to say, Lord, wherever I have given the devil legal access, let the blood speak. Are you getting me? Whether it's my mistake, whether it's my carelessness, let the blood speak. Pray. Let the blood speak. The blood can speak above every other blood. There's blood speaking in your village, but there is the blood of the son of the living God 
it has a voice it speaks mercy it speaks freedom it speaks liberty let the blood speak I plead the blood over my failures I plead the blood over my mistakes pray I plead the blood over my carelessness pray whatever gives Satan legal access in my life and my family let the blood speak Let the blood speak higher. Let the blood speak. Let the blood speak. Tonight is your night of liberty. Let the blood speak. Satan cometh unto me and does not find anything of himself let the blood speak against altars against yokes against covenants the mystery of the blood is the one last card that Satan cannot resist Hallelujah. 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 I'm ready to pray for you. See, some of you will be shocked tonight. Be, I know I, I, I prayed for people for, de, for deliverance and the rest. Many of you will be surprised tonight. We have few minutes, but we want it to be thorough. This one is not for your family. This one is for yourself. If you don't believe it, no problem. We are not offended. But for those who know that tonight must be this night. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tonight we are going to pray. I cannot tell you the things I have seen from the time we began to pray. Brothers and sisters, there are altars speaking against people. There are altars speaking against people. There are altars speaking. Some of us, you know what I'm saying. But tonight, I hear the chains falling. I hear the chains falling. This is what I hear in my spirit. I hear the chains falling. I hear the chains falling. Hallelujah. Father, whoever is delivered tonight, we put a barricade. It must be complete deliverance tonight. Deliverance with proofs that they will see in their lives. And my God, I pray that no one spirit will survive the fire that is about to be released in this building. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands inside and outside. Take this moment very, very serious. I need all the instruments and everything that can come in. Hallelujah. Drummer, follow them. I need the symbols. I'm going to pray. I see altars. See Tonight is going to be a ministration of fire. Many of you don't even know what fire. Fire is not just for falling down. Hear me. Fire is a mystery. It's the manifestation of the spirit that separates, that prunes, that delivers. I'm going to pray. Don't, don't worry about how many times you have fallen. Tonight, it will happen for real. 
because you have prayed it and because you are tired and because God has commanded it lift your hands please hallelujah at the count of three I'd like you to shout the name Jesus once that happens Steve play everybody play hallelujah Shakata Balaraba. It's fire tonight. It will catch some of you. It will burn that chaff. Many of you will share stories. Hear me? We don't kill people. But I tell you, some people will have to give way this night for your destiny to be open. Oh, for sure. For sure. For sure. I don't care what needs to be happened. What needs to happen tonight? The door of your destiny must open are you ready now thank you father because of your anointing let it break yokes let curses and yokes be broken at the count of three are you ready now please shout it from the depth of your heart one two three out out right now i said altars on fire I said altars fire, 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 fire. Let the fire consume every altar. Let the fire consume every spell, every enchantment. Bring them out. Bring them out. I set it on fire now. I set it on fire. I command judgment, judgment, judgment. Let the right hand of God be stretched right now over your life. Hey, kototo teka, retete tete baka, mareko koso bariata. I hear the chains falling. Hey. The chains falling. Yeah. Lord, we hear the chains falling. Lift your hands, please. We have to hurry up. We're out of time. Please lift your hands, everybody. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to pray. It's a dangerous prayer. Hallelujah. It's a dangerous prayer. You just keep your hands lifted. I'm flowing as the Holy Ghost is. There are some of you here. I'm seeing you tied. This is what I'm seeing. Those people will be released right now. I'm seeing you tied. No, just, just keep your hands. At the count of three, the power of God is going to come on certain people. I'm seeing them tied. This is what I see in the spirit. Hallelujah. Father, right now, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, at the count of three, anyone tied here, be released. One, two, get ready now. Three, receive it now. Receive it now. Be released. I release you now, 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 now. There are people tied. I release them. Go to to te 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 te. E can te con proscoma. Record to the gate. Be released now. 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 I command judgment. Whoever has tied you and tied your destiny this night, I release the fire of judgment upon them. I hear the chains falling. Yeah. I hear the chains falling. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Goodness. 
we just have a few minutes but lift your hands God is delivering people from anger hear me anger this thing called anger when I pray for you you will know it's a spirit and it's not normal hallelujah anger anger many ladies will be involved in this hallelujah at the count of three all I want you to shout is the name Jesus follow me drama hallelujah anger is a spirit is a wicked spirit hallelujah lift your hands at the count of three my God anyone under any influence of the spirit of anger at the count of three it will leave them forever are you ready now one two three Go, 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 every spirit, go, 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 go. God has not given us that spirit out of them. Come out, come out right now. Come out of them. Come out of them. Come out of them right now. Come out of them right now. goes from your life hallelujah lift your hands quickly we want to pray against the spirit of fear many of you cannot take bold steps you are afraid of everything you are afraid of failure you are afraid of success you are afraid of marriage you are afraid to take steps you are afraid of starting a business what if I fail? That spirit must leave you this night. Lift your hands. Spirit of fear. Spirit of fear. Spirit of fear. Are you ready now? Lord, at the count of three, as they shout that name, Jesus, I command fear. Fear is a dangerous spirit. It must leave you right now. Are you ready now? One, two, three. Fear, go, 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 go. I command fear everywhere. The spirit of fear. The spirit of fear. Go, go. Come out of God's people right now. The spirit of fear. The spirit of fear. The spirit of fear. I cast it now. Hallelujah. Listen. Now I'm going to pray against the spirit of disobedience, non compliance. Man, this spirit must lead you to obey the principles of God. Are you hearing me? And I believe this should concern everybody. You should say, Lord, whatever makes me to find it hard to obey the principles of the kingdom, it must leave. Lift up your hands. Complete, prompt obedience. The Bible says his laws are not burdensome. Hallelujah. Shout this at the top of your voice. That name Jesus. I'm going to count five. At the count of five, I want you to shout it at the top of your voice. That name Jesus. And Lord, let every spirit that sponsors disobedience, rebellion, and hardness of heart, let it leave your people right now. Are you ready now? One, two, three, four, five. Every spirit of disobedience, go, 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 go.
go now. Now, spirit of rebellion, I curse you. I curse you. I curse you. I curse you. Spirit of disobedience, I curse you. I curse you. I curse you. Prophesy over your life. From today, in the name of Jesus, release this lady right now. I see you already in the spirit. Out you go. On your mark, get set, go. Out. Out right now. On your mark, get set. Go, 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 go. Out. Out of her. On your mark, get set. Out you go. Look, don't waste our time. Go, go. Please, no manifestation. Go out now. Now. I forbid every useless manifestation. We're out of time. Just go. Now, leave her. Leave her. Look at me, Osha. Walk with me. I said, leave her. Go. See, do you know why I say you should leave her? I'm, I'm, I'm flowing under a heavy unction. Just leave her. Let's continue what we're doing. Hallelujah. Prophecy does not reveal, it creates. Have you not left her? Where did she go to? On your knees and out of her. Now. On your knees and out. Quickly, don't waste our time. I gave an instruction on your knees and out. Many of you think it's out. That's how some of you get deceived. You say, thank you, Jesus. On your knees and out. Please listen. I pray right now. to speak over your life right now in the name that is above all names every voice right now that is contrary to Christ in your life right now let it be silenced forever in the name of Jesus let it be silenced now in the name of Jesus. Let it be silenced in the name of Jesus. Let it be silenced in the name of Jesus. Every altar that speaks against you, I set it on fire now. I set it on fire now. Whoever is responsible for the predicaments in your life, I judge them this night. Every spirit that is responsible for poverty and failure, in the mighty name of Jesus, be free from it now. 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 Any other thing that ties you down, whatsoever it is, both for yourself and your family members, 
be released right now in the name of Jesus. Be released right now in the name of Jesus. Be released right now in the name of Jesus. In place of that cause, I put a blessing upon your life. Blessed beyond the cause. Blessed beyond any covenant. I bless you. Many of you don't know what I'm doing. Just receive. I put a blessing on your life. I put a blessing on your life. Let it create a garden of Eden. Everywhere you go, I turn things around for your favor. I release favor. I release blessings. You are free. You are free. I declare you free. Therefore, whatever has not been working in your life, I command it to begin to work now. I command it to begin to work now. Whatever should have come into your life and is still pending, whether your life partner, whether your job, I pray that from now to next miracle, this miracle service, within these seven days, may God do something that will surprise you. I said, may my God do something that will surprise you. The miracle is for the believer. The miracle is for the believer. Lord, in seven days, change the stories of men. In seven days, transform people in a dramatic way. May they return on Friday with fearful testimonies. Hallelujah. You've not given your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not making any long discussion. I'm going to invite you to come. Please listen. This is a very solemn moment. Or you've given your heart to the Lord, but you found yourself derailing, and you know that you, meet, you need to make it right with Jesus, wherever you are, whether inside or outside. Your salvation is the number one step to your total and complete liberty. And right now, as we begin to celebrate them, you've never made a decision for Jesus, or you are rededicating your life Please leave your seat and come out right now. Don't wait for anybody. You are the first person. Please stand up. Everybody keep standing. Let's celebrate them. God bless you. God bless you. Please don't sit back. This is the moment of salvation. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll wait for you. Koinonia, keep clapping for them. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. There are still more people coming. Don't sit back. Don't let the devil keep you. Forward ever, backward never. The devil will never take charge of your life. Jesus gives you a new beginning tonight. God bless you, my sister. God bless you, my brother. Keep coming. There are people coming from outside. Keep coming. We don't care how bad it is. Just keep coming to Jesus Christ. For as many who will come, he will in no wise despise. Come, keep coming. God bless you. It will break you free. Hallelujah. These three boys, you people smoke. You smoke all kinds of things, but you'll be delivered today. As you were coming, I saw it. They smoke this thing. These funny things, three of them. They are making a bold decision for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, thank you for this bold decision. Is that you? Come on, give me a big hug. I'm happy to see you safe. Give me a very big hug. Bless you. Hallelujah. Now lift your hands to heaven. Lift your hands to heaven. Please, you are not reciting a poem. This is a very deep and serious confession. Okay? Say after me, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you died for me. I believe you rose again for me. Forgive me. Cleanse me. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life. From today, I'm a child of God. The nature of sin leaves me. 
and I receive the life of Christ. My name is in the book of life and I receive grace to live a life of holiness and righteousness in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for these ones. You brought them by your power to preserve them. I thank you because you set them free from every chain and shackle of Satan. I break that addiction. I break that addiction. I break that addiction. I break that addiction. It will never return in the name of Jesus Christ. It will never return in the name of Jesus Christ. Look at me. Thank you for making this bold decision. Please just follow the ushers. They will have your details. Just turn. Where are the ushers? Direct them. There's somebody directing you. Just turn around and they will have your details in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. God bless you. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages, subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.